The Tor Network was created by got uh, the government uh, DARPA for the Navy in order to um, mm-hmm. um, you know so that they can pass secrets around and stuff like that and. They released it to the public. That's what sort of made it powerful was that uh, a lot of people had to be using it once. So, you know, the government made it so you can pass stuff around secretly, and that's where the dark web came from. And um, they set up a website where people could buy and sell things that they wanted to buy and sell without the impediments of government. Well, that meant that people were selling things like drugs and government IDs, and a variety of things, some of which I don't think I support, but um, I do believe there was a study that was put out that showed that the uh, Silk Road was actually making the drug trade safer. And that's true. And that would be, you know, I think that's a good thing. Making the drug trade safer is good for everybody. No cops died in the, uh, you know, creation of the Silk Road. So we've been following along with this Silk Road, uh, these allegations against Ross Ulbricht. We've had his mother on the show, Lynn, who has you know stood by him in this. And today has was the big day. Today was the first day of the trial in Manhattan. He's facing the rest of his pretty much the rest of his life in prison. You know, multiple charges, felony counts. With decades. they're going to throw away the key if uh, yeah. yeah, decades are uh, are the, in the possibility here. And uh, so, you know, this is a big trial. And as we've talked about over the last couple of days, that there are major implications here. You know, one of the big implications is the idea that, well, if you create a website, how is it that you are responsible for what people do with that website? Is the person who created Craigslist responsible for everyone who advertises as a prostitute on Craigslist? I mean, no, clearly not. I don't I mean, think so, but I also don't really support that line of thinking terribly. Which, in this which case. line of thinking? The line of thinking that you're somehow not responsible, f- uh, that, r- that Dread Pirate Roberts, whoever he might be, mm-hmm. was somehow not responsible for the drug trade on the Silk Road when he created the website basically for that. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but the argument is that it's one step in the direction toward making administrators of a website accountable for the things that the users do with it. Um, Ultimately, you you know, I understand that argument. I guess we'll see what what happens in courts, Uh, but I I don't want to be held responsible for the things that my users post on freetalklive.com. I don't want to be held responsible for what you post on the Free Talk Live BBS. It's none of my business what you do there, and I don't really care. And I don't feel like anybody who's an administrator of a website should be held responsible for the individuals who utilize that site for whatever purpose. Now, of course, you could also argue that Dread Pirate Roberts was indeed profiting from the transactions that were going on on the Silk Road. And there, you know, that probably will be another uh, tough one to beat in front of this jury, which, by the way, I've been observing this throughout the day, the, the different uh, tweets and things that have been coming out, because uh, people who have been attending the trial have not been allowed to have cell phones in the courthouse. Mm. So any information that's coming out is pr- from someone leaving the court and getting their phone back and then actually tweeting information about what has gone on. So there's mm. there's likely been a delay between what goes on in the courtroom and when we actually get the news about it. It's not like here in New Hampshire where you can sit in the courthouse on your cell phone. As long as it's not ringing and making noise, they won't bother you here. Right. But in the federal court, I know it's this way in in uh, the, like the Concord Federal Court, they will confiscate everyone's cell phones. And Michelle Seven told me that she was going to try to get a media pass. Apparently, if you can prove to the feds that you're – media they will allow you to bring a cell phone in at least that's what she thought but turns out they're not allowing anyone to bring cell phones in mm. so even though michelle and john bush from the liberty beat and you know Derek J, they all had press passes none of them were allowed to actually bring uh, cell phones in from what i understand yeah i gotta so. say that they uh it, it's really kind of silly this whole prohibition that they've got as far as uh you know somebody getting a fair trial or whatever it is um with cameras and uh, electronics in, in the courtroom. If somebody's creating a problem, they're creating a problem that really doesn't have anything to do with anything else. If somebody's sitting there, um, you know, the stenographer is tic tacking away, typing. Why can't somebody sit on a laptop and, uh, you know, type? Or why can't we, why can't, why don't we have a, v- a camera feed from these courtrooms? And I, it's difficult. There is one in the New Hampshire Supreme Court. From That's what awesome. I understand. Um, I, I tend to not trust these people because I believe they operate under the cover of darkness. And this doesn't make me trust them anymore. So there have been some interesting uh, tweets that have come out today, but the big, big news is what has been released now literally just minutes ago. Uh, Wired.com has it. 
the opening statements were able to go forward today. So the, most of the, the good chunk of today in the courtroom was jury selection. And it was the old opening statements that I think are going to shock a lot of people. Uh, let's just jump right into that. Then we can talk about the jury selection and some of the other interesting observations. The judge threatening the uh, the jury today mm. uh, via the protesters. I'll explain what all that means here in a moment. Story from Wire.com. This is Andy Greenberg who has been following along with this. Now, you may recall that name if you've been listening to Free Talk Live for a little while. Andy Greenberg was the guy who got the exclusive interview with Dread Pirate Roberts like a year ago. Oh, yeah. Remember, we read that on the air here, and it was in that interview that the Dread Pirate Roberts at that time claimed he was not the first Dread Pirate Roberts, but the second Dread Pirate Roberts, yes. and that the original Dread Pirate Roberts had, you know, left the ship, so to speak, and handed it over to the new guy. For the past year, this is Greenberg writing today, just posting at about 527 Eastern Time uh, this evening. Silk Road's defense, because we did get to opening statements. For the past year, the FBI and federal prosecutors have told and retold the story of how Ross Ulbricht created owned and operated the massive, anonymous online drug empire known as the Silk Road. But as his trial began Tuesday, Ulbricht's defense lawyers for the first time told their own version of that story. And while theirs also begins with Ulbricht creating the Silk Road, that's right, he's admitted to it. Okay. Uh, it ends with Ulbricht being framed by the real operators of the site to whom he'd handed over control. In his opening statement in a Manhattan courtroom, defense attorney Joshua Dreidel began with a surprising admission that his client Ross Ulbricht was, in fact, the founder of the Silk Road. But Dreidel went on to explain the site was meant merely to be a kind of economic experiment that Ulbricht only controlled for a brief time. The eventual adoptive owners of the Silk Road, Dreidel, Dreidel claimed, would later trick Ulbricht into serving as the fall guy when they sensed an impending law enforcement crackdown. Hmm. After a few months, he found it too stressful for him, and he handed it over to others, Dreidel told the jury, describing the Silk Road's early days. At the end, he was lured back by those operators to take the fall for the people running the website. Ross was not a drug dealer, he added. He was not a kingpin. That new story, describing Ulbricht as a patsy for the powerful online drug lords who operated the Silk Road at its peak, won't be an easy sell. In its own opening statement, the prosecution outlined powerful evidence against Ulbricht that includes proof the FBI caught him logged into a Silk Road administrator panel in the San Francisco Public Library last year and a journal and logbook found on his laptop that detail his activities in running the Silk Road. Assistant U.S. Attorney Timothy Howard also said in a statement that Ulbricht at one point confessed creating the Silk Road to an old college friend hmm. that purported, well, of course, we know he's created the Silk Road. They've admitted that much. Right. Uh, that purported personal breach of Ulbricht's secrecy represents a damaging new claim from the prosecution, and Howard said that the college friend would be serving as a witness in the trial. As the alleged administrator of the Silk Road known as Dread Pirate Roberts, Ulbricht faces charges including narcotics, money laundering, and hacking conspiracies. But Tuesday's opening statements show that the trial will center around proving that Ulbricht is, in fact, the Dread Pirate Roberts. The Silk Road, after all, used the anonymity software Tor and the cryptocurrency Bitcoin expressly to hide its users' identities. And the trial could be a case study in how law enforcement cuts through those layers of technological obfuscation or fails to. Dreidel, the defense attorney, told the jury, quote, The Internet is a strange place. People can create and fabricate profiles for themselves and others. We'll talk more about Ulbricht, the alleged fall guy. You can share your thoughts with us here. 855-450 free as the first day of the Ross Ulbricht trial uh, has wrapped up. It's Free Talk Live. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. 
On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years, hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. You guys live in a dream world. No, sir, you're the one that lives in a dream world. You're the one that wants to have a police state in America where you get to determine who can come in and who can't. You want to have you border want to patrols. Let you want to have checkpoints. This, you want to let the entire third world into this country? Sir, let me get, let, I'll answer that question by reading a short excerpt from a poem. Maybe you've heard of it. It happens to appear at the bottom of the Statue of Liberty. It was you're about... You're poor, you're tired, tired, huddled masses. Right, right. you are you're aware of it, let yes. Let them come in legally, Legal. Well, no, come on, the legally, Lou. The legal is such a cop legal. out. No, hold on a second, because when your ancestors came across, and I don't know what they are, let's say they're Italian. When your ancestors came across, all they did was take you to Ellis Island, screw up your last name, sit you around for three days, and then bam, you're out the door. Now legal is a huge pile of paperwork and tens of thousands of dollars. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you'd like right here. Now, we are talking about the Silk Road, but you don't have to. You can also take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. The biggest revelation of the day has to be that Ross Ulbricht has admitted, through his defense attorneys, to being Dread Pirate Roberts, the operator of the Silk Road, the creator of the Silk Road, though he's saying he bailed out after just a few months and then was somehow lured back in by the site's subsequent operator in order to take the fall for what they knew was apparently a law enforcement come down. Hmm. So that's the story. That's the short version. We're going to give you more from Wire.com here in just a moment. And don't forget, if you want to get a pound of some of the best coffee out there from BuzzBox, you go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Now, BuzzBox coffee is awesome coffee. I mean, this is good quality stuff. Mark, you are a regular coffee drinker, and you swear by this product. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it just tastes better. It's shade grown, 100% organic, top 1% great Arabica beans. It's just better tasting coffee. But, you know, I don't. I drank regular coffee for a long time, and I'm like, oh, you know, this is fine and everything. Um, for me, what it was is uh, what what converted me on it is a better coffee is better for you, and b 
BuzzBox has a program where we're able to give microloans out to uh, people around the world as a result. So they have this sort of charitable aspect to them. And I really think that's awesome. We got another check today, and I will be All right. you know, depositing that, and we'll be microloans will, will go out to people around the world. And we'll be able to help more folks because you've decided to upgrade your coffee drinking experience by going to coffee.freetalklive.com, getting a free pound of it, trying it out, and then sticking with the program after that. Once you get your free pound, you can sort of customize your uh, shipping. You can customize which kind of coffee you want to get. And they have the water decaf there. So what I did was I signed up. A second time and and sent the the regular pound of regular coffee that's not decaffeinated off to Mm -hmm. my father-in-law. And that way I was able to get the water decaffeinated one after it started shipping. So the free pound is regular coffee. And then after that, I could get the decaf. And it's worked out really well. So it's coffee.freetalklive.com. Get a free pound and try it out. Awesome. All right. We're going to continue here with a story from Wired.com. The perfect fall guy reports Andy Greenberg as Dreidel. This is the defense attorney for Ross Ulbricht. As Dreidel told it, Ulbricht had long given up control of the Silk Road by the time he was arrested and charged with running the site last year. But as the site's initial creator, he was the perfect fall guy, said Dreidel. He told the jury he would present evidence that the real Dread Pirate Roberts paid for information about the law enforcement investigation that focused on him, including information that they had possibly learned his real name. And that name is not Ross Ulbricht. The new operators of the Silk Road had been alerted the walls were closing in, said Dreidel. That's what compelled the Dread Pirate Roberts to put his escape plan into action, framing Ulbricht, according to Dreidel's telling. In Dreidel's version of the events, Ulbricht's store of bitcoins was simply the earnings from his early investments in the cryptocurrency, not the Silk Road profits, the prosecutors allege. Which, by the way, from what I understand, they've already sold off those bitcoins, unless I'm mistaken. Right. I think that that's ridiculous that they can do that. And I believe they have sold off the the bitcoins. So they can confiscate your property. Yeah. Sell your property. Before you're even found guilty. Before you're found guilty. Like, for me, it's not, this trial isn't about the guilt of Ross Ulbricht. Um, it is about the government's conduct in this trial, and it's been wide open. Uh, the The judge approved them uh, making accusations that Ulbricht has killed somebody before, uh, before they to put him on trial for it. I mean, yep. that that's just nuts as far as I'm concerned. They... You know, there's no sanction. Nothing happens to government agents that take a man's property. Now, he's presumed innocent. In the United States of America, police confiscated an innocent man's property, sold it, and the, at this point they're keeping the proceeds. I suppose they can get the proceeds back, but he wouldn't want his property sold in the first place. Now, honestly, I don't remember if they've sold both Ulbricht's bitcoins or just the Silk Road seized Bitcoins. I don't recall okay, that, I don't know how that, that detail. It's possible that they may still be holding on to Ulbricht's. I don't recall. If you remember that detail, please let us know. 855-450-FREE. So in Dreidel's version of the events, Ulbricht's Bitcoins were just the earnings from his early investments in the cryptocurrency, not the Silk Road profits the prosecutors allege. Dreidel points out that the Bitcoins seized from Ulbricht are only a small fraction of the full $18 million that the government has said the Dread Pirate Roberts earned in Silk Road commissions. And he implied... That the and that's 18 million U.S. dollars, uh, and he implied that the evidence found on Ulbricht's computer at the time of his arrest was falsified to leave him holding the bag when the real operators of Silk Road knew their time was up. He didn't elaborate on how the evidence could have been planted on Ulbricht's computer. That will be interesting to uh, find out. It the- certainly would, but you know that's uh, if if the intrigue goes deep enough, I wouldn't. I, who knows? The Dread Pirate Roberts is someone who studiously avoided revealing his identity to anyone on the site. The same person goes to a public library and uses public Wi-Fi connection, Dreidel asked the jury, that Ross is DPR is a contradiction so fundamental that it defies common sense. Dreidel added, the real DPR is out there. We'll talk more about the opening statements in the Ross Ulbricht case here in a moment. Aaron is with us. You can also bring up anything you want. Aaron, you're on Free Talk Live listening in St. George, Utah, KZNU. Hi, guys. Yeah, thanks for taking the call. I have um, a libertarian perspective that I need from you guys, what you would do in this situation. That is, say a city has a piece of land in which um, nothing has really been done or developed on it. No improvements have been been done or conducted on the land. Um, But you have a private entity 
um, that wants to come in and uh, erect a uh, private business on the land uh, in conjunction with the city in type of a partnership and ask that that land be uh, deeded or partially deeded for this purpose. Or you also have uh, competing interest in the city that says, hey, I, we would just like to have a park on this land. And uh, this is kind of a hot debate, and I was curious how a libertarian would come into this uh, situation and how he would best distribute the land uh, back to the people if you had to make a choice between those two options. Well, t- between those two options, I think you're you know giving a libertarian a very difficult conundrum. Uh, shall we make a public-private partnership with some uh, group of people that stand to benefit from the public's land that we will s- either gift or deed or whatever to them, or do we make a park where all the kitties can play? And that's those are tough uh, you know things for any libertarian to uh, to say because you're saying uh, you know how are we going to use the government stuff? I would say that the best way for this, uh, you know, to, to handle this is put the land up for auction. Mm. The person who wins the auction can do what they wish with the land. Take the money made from the auction, put it towards people's property taxes, um, and give everybody a discount next year as a result. That sounds like the easiest way for me to answer the question. I don't know about this public-private partnership. I don't know about a park. I don't know what's right for this land, but... I do know that people can run parks and make money off of them. Um, there's all kinds of them out there. And I know that, uh, you know, obviously a private interest could make could make good use of the land. Does that answer your question, Aaron? Yeah, I think that helps out. I was just looking for how, you know, if you were in this decision-making situation, how you guys would approach this. Because, yeah, I uh, agree with Mark. I like the idea of putting it up to the uh, the highest bidder. That makes, that makes sense to me. Thanks for the call, Aaron. There's okay. more coming up here on Free Talk Live. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The Empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write WORMS in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. 
It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. If you are successful at what you do, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, a business owner, or you have a great career, you understand the concept of protecting yourself. Well, are you protecting yourself, your family, and your assets with quality term life insurance? Consider these possible rates. A man age 45 non-tobacco user could obtain $1 million of coverage for as little as $75 a month, and this rate is fixed for the next 10 years. We specialize in policies of $500,000 and above. A man age 50 non-tobacco user may be able to obtain $500,000 of coverage for as little as $115 a month, and this rate is fixed for the next 20 years. We have great rates for smokers, too. Call the Term Lifeline now. 800-872-0403 800-872-0403 You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm That's facebook.lrn.fm This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here, and you can bring up anything you want, although uh, the Silk Road, I think, is going to be the overarching discussion throughout the show tonight. We've talked a little bit about what happened inside the courthouse, but that's only part of the story from what happened in Manhattan today. Our friend Derek J. Freeman, our co-host normally here on uh, Monday nights, was there all day today, from what I understand, along with uh, some other great activists from Keene and Manchester, New Hampshire, who carpooled down uh, to show support for Ross Ulbricht, who has now, in an opening statement, his attorney has admitted that he indeed was the creator of the Silk Road. But the claim is that he left the Silk Road after just a few months and then was somehow lured back in to take the fall for the site's actual operator. It's an interesting story. It's an interesting story and I don't know I don't know what to believe. I'm not on the jury. It just sounds like, you know, a story. Yep. I wonder to myself the feds have a story too. Right, they do. Yep. Uh, and I, I don't think, you know, the it, where where what's the truth? I suppose you're supposed to find that out as a juror. I don't know the answer, but you know, how what's the if this is a fabricated story, what's the best way to go about fabricating a story? Do you just tell your lawyer, "I did it." Let's take the facts and create a narrative. Or do you try to do it on your own and then have your lawyer believe it? I mean, what I don't know. It just seems like it's it's a very difficult thing to sort of come up with. Well, you I mean, legally you can tell your lawyer that you did it and he still would have to defend you, right? Yeah, but that doesn't mean he has to come up with a narrative. Okay. Right? You can't make you can't make somebody lie, thank God. Well, we know the narrative of the site was that Dread Pirate Roberts had switched at it's some true. point. Now, whether or not that was just some sort of plan on Ross Ulbricht's part to make it sound like it wasn't him, you know, like a long-term plan, or that's actually what happened. That's certainly what they're alleging happened, was that Ross created the site, handed it off. We'll talk more about they have uh, some evidence. what the defense said here, but uh, there's it's been some interesting tweets from at Brave the World. This is Julia Taransky, who we had on the show uh, last week with, uh, with Michelle Seven. She was tweeting from outside of the courtroom. She was watching the trial mm -hmm. and then going outside to... Uh, to tweet, and she says here, as the jury has been selected, uh, that most jurors selected have family in government work or are government workers. Oh, and geez. in addition to that, she says these people are not Ross Ulbricht's peers. So this is not going to be an easy trial. Let's talk to Matthew. He is in Austin, Texas. You're on mm -hmm. Free Talk Live, Matthew, via Skype. Hey, guys. How's it going tonight? Good, sir. Um, I was listening to your podcast from last night, so I'm sorry to kind of break top topic here, but okay. fortunately it is Free Talk Live. I was calling about Freemasonry. Okay. Um, okay. I was listening to the topic last night, and I wasn't really satisfied with the people who called in saying they were Masons and the explanations that they offered, so I am a Mason myself. Uh -huh. And, and how do you offer, prove that, sir? <laughs> well, I would present you my dues card. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's the best, pres that's the best uh, proof I could see. Yeah, uh, so it's a club, really. It is a club that has various uh, factions to it. And 
so many people get confused with the 32nd and 33rd degree of Freemasonry, mm -hmm. thinking that it is somehow the highest level or the highest attainable level. There was a gentleman last night who mentioned that, uh, you know, he was a 32nd degree Mason, but he, he, he thinks that the 33rd is the highest degree. The, well, literally none of them are higher. Um, if no. you think about Freemasonry as a ladder, there's only three steps. That's what I thought, too, is I thought there were essentially three degrees and then the rest of the stuff was just sort of, I don't know. What else? A side degree. Okay. So if you think about it as a stairway, uh, once you get to the top, there are other rooms you can go into, but they're all on the same floor. Okay. So hold on, just to be clear, you're saying that it's the third level that is the top of masonry or the 32nd level? The third. And so in once you get to the third level, which apparently, according to the guy who called yesterday, you can do fairly quickly because he, he'd only been a mason for two years. No, he, no. Well, actually, it's the 32nd degree that you can get to fairly quickly after you attain the third degree. I see. So the, the first three degrees are in a actual lodge where you will see the square and compasses prominently displayed. That's going to be entered apprentice, fellow craft and master mason. Now, those take time. And the reason for that is because once you petition the lodge, they then have to vote on you, investigate you with a committee, basically meet you over lunch or dinner and just ask you questions about your background. And then once you're accepted into it, you go through a ritualistic drama that's called a degree, which is part of the secrecy that we don't reveal. Okay. And then after you receive that, every degree has what's called esoteric work. Are you familiar with what a catechism is? Well, uh, it's the, like a Catholic thing, right? Right. It's a school for Catholics, a Sunday school well, for Catholics or something. Isn't it uh, well, something you repeat? Uh, yes, that's correct. The catechism is a series of questions and answers that are memorized in order to uh, teach principles. Okay. Them. However, they're not exclusive to, uh, to Catholicism. Masonry has its own catechisms. It's a series of questions and answers that every person who goes through the degrees has to learn. Now, how you learn that is... Uh, through another Mason. Nothing's allowed to be written down as part of the secrecy. Interesting. So as a result, there's nothing for you to study. You have to actually meet with another brother who will teach it to you mouth to ear. And that's been done that way for several yeah. hundred years. An oral that's tradition. A, that's correct. Okay. It's an oral tradition that goes back several hundred years. That's and interesting. is largely unchanged. Now, another point I wanted to make is that People also see the Scottish Rite as somehow being a governmental body for Freemasonry in general. That is incorrect as well. The way that Masonry is structured is actually rather libertarian in, its, uh, in, in the way that it's constituted. Every state has what's called a Grand Lodge that is uh, the ultimate governing body for all of the constituent lodges within that state. There is no authority higher than that in anywhere else in the world. So the Scottish Rite, which for the southern jurisdiction, there's there's another juris, northern Masonic jurisdiction based in the uh, basic, mostly the northeast, but uh, the, the Scottish Rite southern jurisdiction gets the most attention because it has the most ornate building, basically. That's just up the street hmm. from the White House in Washington. Okay. However, the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry cannot tell, uh, say, for, I'm in Texas, so a Texas Mason you know, we've declared this edict and now you have to follow it. They can't tell the Grand Lodge what to do. The Grand Lodge could actually make a resolution saying no more Scottish Rite Masonry in Texas. Sorry. Bye. And what is then, a Scottish Rite Masonry? It was mentioned last night, but I'm not really sure what that is. So as I mentioned, you become a master Mason by going through three degrees and learning memory work. Okay. Once you attain that level, then there's more organizations that you can join that are exclusive to master masons only hmm. the scottish rite is one of them they're called appendant bodies it's like the analogy that i made like once you get to the top floor there's other rooms you can go in but they're all on the same level is one of those rooms a human sacrifice room i'm not gonna tell you <laughs> <laughs> now you did mention that the secrecy surrounds the things that are orally told so the things that you have to learn, there's secrecy surrounding that. You mentioned there's secrecy surrounding the what you described as a ritualistic, I forget the, drama. the uh, ritualistic drama. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's a little play. It's a little play. Think of it like a play, okay? Only it's an interactive play. That, will, uh, will you be decapitated if you reveal any of these secrets? No, no, what, I won't. What will happen? But I would be what? disrespected. 
I, yeah. If if it was revealed that I were if it was discovered that I were to reveal what are the called the uh, secrets of Freemasonry, then nothing would really happen to me. However, those who know about it, they definitely would lose respect for me because mm-hmm. I haven't honored the agreement. You presumably would be removed from the the order, correct? That would require administrative. Uh, there would be there would have to be a Masonic trial for that. Masonry has its own legal system as well, <laughs> and uh, I would be able to invoke my Masonic rights, and uh, then there would be, there would be several levels of bureaucracy that I would have to go through. <laughs> awesome! How long? Like how many of these? How many of these trials go on per year? Very few. Yeah, it's I would think. I mean, good lord! How many people are in your lodge there in Austin? Uh, well, Austin itself has. People are under the impression that uh, there's generally one for every locale, and that's not the case. Uh, when you get out into the country, there are rural lodges, but here in Austin, there's quite a few. My lodge has almost 500 members. Wow, outside. that's a lot of people. It's fascinating stuff. I appreciate you calling in to, uh, to clear that up, Matthew, and feel free to add in anytime you like. Thanks for the call. The Skype username that he just used to connect is lrn.fm. You can jump on here and bring up anything that's on your mind. Coming up more from New York City, the Ross Ulbricht trial, day number one. It's Free Talk Live. And now from the Cato Institute, the Cato Constitution Minute. Writing the U.S. Constitution was no easy task. In the blazing heat of summertime Philadelphia, delegates spent 115 days debating complicated issues of representation and federal authority. The document they ultimately crafted offered a radical change in the way government is structured, one capable of taxing and regulating citizens directly and operating its own military. Many worried these new powers could erode state authority and individual rights. Many refused to ratify the Constitution until a Bill of Rights was added to protect individual liberties and limit federal power. What led to the Constitution's creation in 1787 was the shared desire by all delegates for a document that protected individual liberty and whose provisions for the new government would, in the words of James Madison, oblige it to control itself. To learn more, visit the Cato Institute online at cato.org. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS, 1-800-425-4610, or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates, 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary, not a solicitation for legal services. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. 
Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Day number one of the Ross Ulbricht trial. He's been waiting for this for 15 months. He's been sitting in a prison cell. No bail allowed for Ross Ulbricht because he has been made out to be a murderous drug kingpin. Even though he's not actually being charged or has not been convicted of any kind of murder-related charges of hiring a hitman, which is what the prosecution would like to allege in front of a jury that he has done, and they've been granted permission to do so by the judge in this case. Not only that, the prosecution motioned the judge to restrict the witness list to the defense right until the weekend before the trial. So you want to talk about one of the most obscene violations of the sort of whole Western judicial system? Yes, to I... I think that that was, to me, the most important thing that I saw come out of this trial is, is that, you know, whether you think somebody's guilty or not, in this country and sort of based on Western values, they're supposed to get a fair trial. And it's completely unfair to reveal the witness list, the prosecution's witness list, 48 hours before the trial starts. It's crazy. You you, I mean, it's it's absolutely nuts. And... To me, I'm not claiming that there's good guys in this battle. I do think I tend to think that Ross Albrecht's a good guy, but if uh, but if it turns out that he actually ordered the killings of people, I will cease to think that. But one well, thing I'm story, certain of yeah. is that these prosecutors and this judge are um, in collusion to basically destroy Western civilization as we know it. These people are evil. So I'm going to go on here with the story that we started at the beginning of the hour, which is a write-up by Andy Greenberg at Wired.com. He's been kind of one of the key players in the media who's been covering the Silk Road for a long time, since before uh, the charges were brought, since before the bust. He interviewed Dread Pirate Roberts uh, back in 2013. I think it was the summer of 2013 when that happened. Sort of, uh, and but, but not like in real time. He sort of did a... Over email. Yeah, an yeah. email interview. Because that was the only way you could talk to Dread Pirate Roberts was through the Silk Road website. So Greenberg continues. He's summarized essentially the cases that were you know kind of put out there today during the opening statements mm-hmm. from the prosecution and the defense. And uh, the prosecution, of course, is arguing that you know, Ross Ulbricht is Dread Pirate Roberts and that he has done all this bad stuff, etc. And the defense, this is the first time we've actually heard their argument. The defense is saying, yes, Ross Ulbricht did create the Silk Road, but then he left after just a few months and was somehow framed for running the Silk Road and, and somehow drawn back in to essentially take the fall as a patsy. And I think that's interesting, but one thing that uh, I found very interesting is, okay, so the juries, the va- the majority of the jurors here either are a government employee yes. or uh, are related to somebody who's a government employee. I heard that the judge threatened the jury. In what yes. way did the uh, it had to do with seeing the signs of the protesters or something? That's correct. So uh, you can be biased in one direction, but you can't be biased in another. So apparently, and, I, and I'm hoping to ask this of uh, Michelle Seven. She is going to call in at some point here tonight. She's currently meeting with Ross Ulbricht's mother at the moment. So after she's done with that meeting, she will be calling. And what I want to know is, I know that in New Hampshire, when you select a jury, you get... Uh, you get certain a certain number of peremptory challenges, I think they're called, mm-hmm. and I believe you only get three in New Hampshire. So that means a peremptory challenge means you can throw a juror out because you don't like the way they look. You don't ha- you don't have to give a reason for it. So from what I understand, the they were asking jurors if they had seen any of the signs that the activists were holding as they walked in today. Activists like our very own Derek J. Freeman and some of the other folks from up here in New Hampshire who carpooled down there. Uh, the signs were things like 30 years in prison for running a website. website. WTF. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, web web hosting isn't a crime. WTF was one of them. So really cool signs. 
And if they admitted to having seen the signs, they were being ejected from the jury. You're kidding me. For seeing a sign. That's correct. And apparently... Uh, so you could work for the government. You can be as statist as you right. want and biased in that way. But if you saw a sign, you are corrupt by the, corrupted yep. by the libertarians. That's right. So Nuts. what I want to know is how many of the jurors were, were dismissed because of this. And also, this just goes, goes to show um, how the government hates protest. Mm -hmm. Like, they hate protest. And what they're going to do is they're going to say anybody who's you know honest enough to have said they saw a sign because everybody saw these things going in, we're just going to throw them out. And this will show those protesters because all the good jurors will get thrown out and we'll keep all the statists. Right. So if Dreidel, this is back to the Wired story, and we can talk more about that. I want to get somebody on the line who was actually witnessing it. Uh, if Dreidel can cast doubt on evidence, this is Ulbricht's attorney, like Ulbricht's purported logbook and diary, Dreidel's narrative has serious flaws that will no doubt be seized upon by the prosecution. Uh, the prosecution's opening statement promised to show evidence that the Silk Road was advertised on drug forums as a way to buy narcotics from its earliest days. Since its initial criminal complaint against Ulbricht, the FBI claimed that it can prove that Ulbricht wrote messages on those forums advertising the Silk Road. In his own opening statement, Prosecutor Timothy Howard stressed that the government will prove that Ulbricht was not only the Silk Road's creator, but the central operator of the site who exerted sole control over it and its staff of 10. He quoted a message from Dread Pirate Roberts in the early days of the Silk Road forums. Quote, I am the Silk Road. I am Silk Road, the market, the person, the enterprise, everything. Unquote. Perhaps the most significant new evidence in Howard's statement was his claim that Ulbricht confessed to running the site to a college friend who had helped him with the programming. That confession would, or excuse me, had helped him with programming, not the programming. That confession would represent the first claim that Ulbricht confided his Silk Road secret to anyone and also contradicts Dreidel's claim that Ulbricht had cut ties with the site and handed over control to other operators. According to Howard, Ulbricht called the as-yet-unnamed friend for programming advice multiple times in 2010 and 2011. After initially refusing to tell the friend about the nature of the site and describing it as top secret, Howard says that Ulbricht eventually caved and revealed his ownership of the Silk Road. Hmm. He showed him the Silk Road, said the attorney, and he bragged that he was the mastermind behind the entire thing. The hmm. debate about whether the Dread Pirate Roberts created the Silk Road or merely inherited it, however, would be or could be reignited by Dreidel's argument. When I interviewed the Dread Pirate Roberts in July of 2013, this is Greenberg at Wired.com, he claimed that he had actually purchased the Silk Road from its creator after helping him to patch a security flaw in the site. I didn't start the Silk Road. My predecessor did. I was in his corner from early on, and eventually it made sense for me to take the reins, Roberts told me at the time. He was well compensated and happy with our arrangement. It was his idea to pass the torch. In fact, we met through the site. I had discovered a big vulnerability in the way he'd configured the main Bitcoin wallet that was being used to process all of the deposits and withdrawals on the site. At first, he ignored me, but I persisted and gained his trust by helping him secure the wallet. From there, we became close friends working on Silk Road together. That was an excerpt from the interview. Yeah. So, um, I mean, this was, we read this on the air yes. at the time, and it was interesting the whole Dread Pirate Roberts has passed on the torch to Dread Pirate Roberts. If you've seen the movie The Princess Bride, you will uh, see the, the humor That's what in, happens, right? in that. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, now that it's being referenced, hmm, you know, there's some, there's some uh, evidence for it. That claim, of course, couldn't be confirmed at the time, and in a phone interview following Ulbricht's arrest, an FBI staffer who declined to be named said that prosecutors had evidence that Ulbricht, speaking as the Dread Pirate Roberts, had lied to me in that interview. If that passing of the Silk Road torch now reiterated by Ulbricht's defense was a lie, the prosecution will have to prove it, and that will depend on what evidence they can present over the next four to six weeks of trial. Now, the prosecution has 11 witnesses, apparently. I did see the witness list today. Okay. Um, but how long it'll take to get through those 11 witnesses, who knows? They're, they're thinking four to six weeks. It's not going to be a short trial. Yeah. We'll pull the curtain back on this dark and secret world, said the prosecutor. Behind it are Ulbricht and his laptop. So that's the story from Wired's Andy Greenberg. The big revelation, if you're just tuning in, is that Ross Ulbricht, in his uh, defense attorney's Opening statement today has admitted to being the original Dread Pirate Roberts, the person who created the Silk Road, and he's saying he passed off control of the site and that somebody else, whoever it was that took control of it, is the person who set him up for the fall.
So he's the Dread Pirate Roberts, but not the Dread Pirate Roberts is the idea. Well, it's going to be an interesting uh, case here because, you know, what's the jury going to think about that as a, as an excuse? Is that going to somehow get him out of some of the charges and some of the allegations but end up with him being convicted of something? Uh, you know, where well, It sounds like he's going to be convicted of something. Yeah. So where all this is going, I don't know, but it's going to be fascinating to watch, and we're going to continue to learn more about this. And our friends uh, are down there tonight in Manhattan. Uh, we will be hearing from somebody this evening. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Alma is in Tallahassee. You're on Free Talk Live, Alma. Hey, sweetie pie. Hey, you're on My the air. My husband's uh, great-great-grandfather was a grandmaster of the Lodge of Georgia. Okay. Uh, my father-in-law was a 33-degree mason. I do not want him in my house. I do not care for him. Uh, we have, I threw up my hand one day with a sign because I looked it up. And, but it come up immediately. And I said, what is that? He says, this steer horns. I said, he joined in Texas. I said, there ain't no steer horns. You're throwing at me. Are you talking about the, the devil I, horns or whatever? So it's still continuing exactly on here. Thank you, Alma, for the call tonight. Uh, the controversy over the Hook Masons horns. continues. Are they satanic or just a bunch of cool guys who like to help out the community? Now we've had people saying both things. It's Free Talk Live. Ugh, cold winter weather. It makes my skin so dry, itchy, and irritated. Can I get some help, please, for this winter skin of mine? Cortisone 10 Intensive Healing has the strongest non-prescription itch medicine available. Its seven moisturizers help heal skin, so you'll stop itching and start feeling relief fast. Ah, my skin feels like it's been on vacation, even with 10 inches of snow outside. Itch-free, worry-free, Cortisone 10. Use as directed. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turns infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, January 13th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.98 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,241 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $232. Antiwar.com reports the Obama administration has confirmed that Cuba is complying with the terms of the largely secret deal on reproachment and has released all 53 prisoners of conscience the U.S. wanted released. The 53 included members of several opposition groups. Jose Daniel Ferrer, the head of one such opposition group, thanked the U.S. for securing the releases, but said there were other political prisoners still being held. Senator Marco Rubio, an outspoken opponent of reproachment with Cuba, termed the releases a minimal change and said Cuba was getting everything it wanted from the U.S. in return. The deal included the U.S. and Cuba trading prisoners and will reportedly lead to an end to the over half a century of embargo on the Caribbean island nation, though officials say that the long-standing travel ban may only be partially lifted. 
For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports New York Times reporter James Risen will not be called to testify in a CIA leak case that has become a flashpoint of contention over press freedom. The Times reported on its website that the Department of Justice said in filings it would not call Risen to testify in the government's federal court case against former CIA officer Jeffrey Sterling. Sterling's lawyer said on Monday they also would not call Risen to take the stand after earlier leaving open the possibility. The years-long legal struggle over whether Risen should be forced to testify came to represent the tension between balancing freedom of the press and U.S. national security. The decision by the two sides in the Sterling case not to call Risen as a witness at trial came one week after the journalist testified in the case at a preliminary hearing in Alexandria, Virginia, where he refused to answer all but a few basic questions about the 2006 book, State of War, that detailed a failed CIA effort to undermine Iran nuclear weapons program. He would not disclose what information confidential sources provided for his book, where or when he met with unnamed sources, and who had not served as a source. It was Risen's first time appearing under oath on the witness stand in the case. Sterling was indicted for unauthorized disclosure of national defense information and other charges in 2010. Risen sought to quash an earlier subpoena requiring him to testify, but an appeals court ruled against him and the Supreme Court declined last year to take up the case. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. UPI reports CNN has received permission from the Federal Aviation Administration to test drones for news gathering and reporting. The news organization will be teaming up with the Georgia Tech Research Institute to collect information on how using drones with cameras attached will work, and the FAA will look at the information and create rules for how news organizations can use drones. CNN Senior Vice President David Vigilante said, Our aim is to get beyond hobby-grade equipment and to establish what options are available and workable to produce high-quality video journalism using various types of UAVs and camera setups. Our hope hope is that these efforts contribute to the development of a vibrant ecosystem where operations of various types and sizes can safely operate in the U.S. airspace. The FAA has previously announced certain restrictions on how film and video makers can use drones, including limiting the drone's weight to 55 pounds and dictating that the drones need to stay in the operator's line of sight. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. According to a groundbreaking new study published Thursday in the New England Journal of Medicine, psychologists have discovered that the average person, while ostensibly appearing to be normal and mentally sound in their day-to-day -day lives, immediately becomes a deranged psychotic when alone at home. We observed hundreds of subjects with successful careers, numerous friends, and loving families perfectly normal. But as soon as they were at their homes by themselves, they began presenting behavior consistent with those suffering from dementia, schizophrenia, and various other acute mental illnesses. Researchers illustrated the study's findings with footage of 29-year-old test subject Brian Temple, who, despite having a steady job and maintaining an ordinary social life, exhibited increasingly erratic and unstable activity from the moment he was alone in his apartment, including dancing in his kitchen to no music whatsoever. He loves coming making grotesque faces in the mirror for extended periods of time, and seemingly having conversations with no one in particular. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited here to take control of these airwaves. The number is 855-450-FREE. We've been talking about the Silk Road trial, as it has been called. Some are saying 
Don't call it the Silk Road trial. Call it the Ross Ulbricht trial. But at this point, I think it's fair enough to call it the Silk Road trial because Ross Ulbricht has admitted to being the original Dread Pirate Roberts, being the person who set up the Silk Road, claiming that he bailed out just after a few months. And the prosecution, of course, is saying that's nonsense and that he's been continuing on the entire time. And they're both going to present evidence. And so it's going to be an interesting what is expected to be four to six week long trial. Our friends Michelle Seven and Derek J. Freeman are down there. I know Derek's intending to stay through at least a couple of weeks, maybe even longer than that. I don't know how long Michelle's planning on being there, but we are going to be hearing from her. She has contacted me to let me know she is in the middle of a meeting at the moment. I believe Ross Ulbricht's mother is involved in that meeting, uh, who, by the way, she has stood by her son. And one of the big questions, as I think Daryl Perry pointed out to us during a break, Mark, is does this change, uh, Does this new? is this new information to us, new information to Ross's mother? Did he tell her, Mom, yeah, look, I was... The guy who set this site up. Or did she just discover that today for the first time like the rest of us? That would be pretty devastating. Uh, so we're going to you know, find out as much as we can about this. I've been following this all day long, Mark. I, I did a blog post over at freekeen.com. Uh, about what the scene was like on the outside of the courthouse. Because there was what happened inside which is what we kind of summed up in the first hour. The prosecute they did jury selection, they did the opening statements, and they may have begun with an uh, with a witness at the very end of the day. Maybe not. I'm not real clear on that. But uh, so there's what happened inside, then there's what happened outside, where there were uh, over a dozen supporters, bright and early, out there from all across the country. People from as far away as Austin, Texas, uh, including John Bush, who came from the Liberty Beat. The Liberty Beat had the best coverage of this all day long. Uh, John had been updating his website at thelibertybeat.com. There's a page on there dedicated to just the updates, and I'll post that on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter, so you can access that. He's been pulling tweets. He's been pulling, you know people's Facebook posts and mainstream media articles and just kind of putting it all up there, summarizing what's happened today. His site was hit so hard by visitors, by traffic today. It went down multiple times. They wow. had to crank up the uh, the website, you know, back-end functions to really make it uh, to work. So a lot of people are paying attention to what's happening uh, in this case. Whether or not the mainstream media is uh, paying attention is another question, but, you know, Groups like Wired, Vice, uh, these guys are covering the the case, and they're covering it very, very well. So some uh, some things that I noted today. First of all, we did talk about how prospective jurors were getting booted if they had seen the activists with the signs out front. Our friend Derek J., our co-host Monday nights, he was holding a sign at one point that said, 30 years to life for an honest website. Uh, Damo Freeman, who was here on Sunday night, he had a sign that said, web hosting is not a crime, WTF. Now, and these, the purpose of these signs, Mark, were to sort of alert people, maybe the jurors, uh, as to what the potential punishment is that Ross Ulbricht is facing. And in the Western system of uh, ju- justice, putting quotes around that, uh, in this crazy justice system that we have here, the jury's not supposed to know that. That doesn't. That isn't always the case. It depends on the state, the jurisdiction, that kind of thing. Okay, I haven't heard of a jurisdiction where the jury is allowed to know. In some cases, they they uh, can p- help pick the sentence. Really? Yeah, that's interesting. Where? I, I look. I don't know these jurisdictions, man. Was uh, it like that in Florida? I don't, I don't know the specifics. So. Oh, that's news to me, Mark. That's interesting because uh, it's certainly not that like that in New Hampshire, and apparently it's not like at the federal level because well, the they, idea is is that a jury is just supposed to decide what guilt or innocent is. They're supposed innocence. to decide the facts, in and the then case. the judge, the professional, will step in and decide what the punishment is to that's rectify this uh, person's thinking, and uh, that's the whole idea. Not that any of us listening here believe for a second that uh, that the the government's any good at fixing people's thinking with their judicial system. Well, the government's scared that the jury is going to have a conscience, and that's why they don't want them to see the signage. Because if the jury sees that this guy's facing 30 years to life in prison for really doing not much more than putting a website together, then that might just make them think, gosh, well, okay, well, even if the government proved their case, 30 years, that's not right for this crime. And they may just go well, with not guilty based on that. And that's what the government doesn't want to happen. It's they also, want to- uh, like the human mind is is going to uh, equivocate, right? It's going to uh, you know make, make little deals with itself. And so if you're like, well, I found because all he was doing was facing 
two weeks or whatever in jail. What's the big deal? This is all over. I can go home and have a, a hamburger. Um, that's something entirely different than saying, yes, I found him guilty and he's going to spend 30 years in prison yep. as a result. But I wasn't really sure. And I don't think juries in this country take their uh, oath to, um, you know, to to, to believe uh, what a reasonable doubt. I don't. I think there's all kinds of reasonable doubts out there in in many of these cases, and the juries just want to go home. Yeah, there's a lot of valid critiques about how bad this this jury system is, but I think that the more information the jurors can have to make um, a decision, the better. The court doesn't doesn't agree with that, however, and the court was willing to threaten the jury uh, indirectly over what the activists were doing outside. Right, and this so, is a chilling effect on protests. You know, the, the yeah, government oh yeah. says that you have, uh, you know, freedom of speech and that you can do protests if that's what you want to do, but then they'll throw out every single juror that you, um, every potential juror that you educate in right. the process. Well, not only that, so that's what they did today, Mark. They threw out jurors who had seen the signage out front, and also Jim Babb was there from Philadelphia with some of the Philly activists. Mm -hmm. They were handing out jury nullification information Plus, uh, you weren't here during the this sh uh, this show that we did, but we had Jim on to talk about the fundraiser they were doing to buy billboard advertising, kind of not, I guess, more like bus stop kind of advertising mm -hmm. in New York City in locations surrounding the uh, the district court, the federal district court. So they, they spent a few thousand bucks and bought some really nice jury rights outreach signage outside that's permanent. You know, it's not held by activists; it's there held by you know billboard kind of things. And so they they have that they've had those up for at least a couple of weeks. And so adding to that, they were actually out in front of the courthouse and they covered both courthouse entrances this morning in case the juror is going to come one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And they handed out information to everybody who was coming by. And apparently, Jim Babb says that at some point the judge uh, basically said that you know if you uh, had received that information, you are not to look at it. You are not if you're a juror or potential jury and you receive that information about jury nullification, you are not to read that information. This is a thousand year right of juries. Um, this is what the English law, common law is based on, is the right of a jury to judge the law, not just the uh, um, the person. And, uh, you know, like this, the judicial system's perverted. And I don't think anyone can uh, can deny that at this point. So uh, to add more insult to injury here, Josie Wales, the outlaw, she posted on Facebook uh, from the judge. She, now she's summarizing, uh, paraphrasing what was said. She warned the courtroom, this is the judge Catherine Forrest, warned the courtroom later this afternoon that if by 9.30 a.m. tomorrow activists continue to show support outside of the courthouse and anyone tries to inform jurors of their rights, the jury will be anonymous and sequestered. Wow. Now, what I'd like to know is, what does that mean, that the jury will be anonymous? Do they have a little room that they can keep them in where it'll be a video trial and they'll have to watch on a TV set to where the people who are observing the trial can't observe the jury? Are they going to put black bags over the jurors' heads and wheel them into the courtroom? What does it mean to have an anonymous jury? I don't understand that. I've never come across it before. If you know the answer, please, can you call in 855-450-FREE? That just sounds crazy to me. I suppose they could set up the courtroom in such a way that there's a, uh, you know, the, the jury's difficult to see from the like put a observation. chalkboard in front of them or something like that? Well, maybe there's, maybe there's a box already. I don't know. We yeah, don't, don't know, know what the courtroom looks like. They won't let anything in there. Yeah, you can't bring a camera in. You can't bring a cell phone in. You can bring a notepad and a, and a, a pencil mm -hmm. into the courtroom, and that's it. That's it. So, um, in addition, Ross's lawyer publicly addressed the courtroom encouraging people to heed the judge's warning mm. because he says activists are only hurting his case. It looks that way. Right? Like that's but but do you see how that's evil? Mm -hmm. Like the judge <laughs> the, the activists are out there educating people about their their constitutional rights and the, the judge is punishing the the the, the, the he's the punishing defendant. everyone. He's punishing the defendant. He's punishing the jury. He's punishing the is activists. She? she thinks he she yeah, whatever the state. The judge is the the state. The court. More coming up here in moments. Eight fifty five four fifty free. This is Free Talk Live. 
So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about, but it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand it's about demonstrating to the entire country that, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you'd like, toll free. We're talking about the Silk Road trial of Ross Ulbricht, who has now admitted to have been the creator of the Silk Road to be uh, the initial Dread Pirate Roberts, but is saying he was not the Dread Pirate Roberts at the time the site was taken offline uh, and that he hadn't been for a long time, but had somehow been lured back in by the operators of the site and then framed as the operator of the site. And so we're going to learn more about this as the trial develops over the next several weeks. If you care about online privacy, you need to know about ProXPN. 
It's a global virtual private network that encrypts your online data. So right now, if you're not using ProXPN, your internet service provider, they're probably logging all of the websites you visit and the search terms that you enter, maybe keeping those logs for up to five years in some cases. And, uh, you know, privacy is more important now than it's ever been. Silk Road case is yet another example of that. So you have to take precautions in order to protect your privacy. You can't expect someone else to do it for you and this is one good step on that road towards as much privacy as you can get it's one step and it's a good one and it's an affordable one so go to proxpn.com slash ftl and take that step because you can jump in for free with their free account uh, you can download their software for windows macintosh ios devices android devices as well so pretty much whatever device you're using you can get proxpn for it and uh, even linux users you can use proxpn proxpn.com slash ftl use code ftl 50 when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account to get the ability to privately torrent, to get past regionally blocked websites, as well as uh, get servers, uh, access servers all around the world, and you have unlimited bandwidth to do it. So proxpn.com slash FTL. Use promo code FTL50. You get it all with a risk-free money, or a seven-day money-back guarantee. It's a great discount on privacy that is priceless. That's proxpn.com slash FTL. We'll talk more about the Silk Road case and not just what went on inside the courtroom, because we are waiting to hear from one of the court observers who was actually there throughout the day today, but also what happened on the outside with uh, Derek J. Freeman, our co-host from Monday nights, the co-host, uh, the host of Free Talk or uh, the host of Peace News Now and also Cop Block Radio. Uh, he was there throughout the day today, but as my, I understand it, he was outside the court. So there was a lot to do from an activist perspective as well. And he made headlines. Uh, the activists that were out there were uh, reported on by The Guardian, USA, I think uh, the BBC. There's all kinds of reports about the Ulbricht trial, and many of them feature photographs of our friends standing out in front of the, the, the courthouse. So we're going to continue here. Your calls about anything go, however. Pete is in California. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Pete. How you doing? Pete, oh, what's on your man, mind tonight? Uh, I work in the nonprofit sector, and I was just doing guard duty in front of the nonprofit, and suddenly the police, all of them, uh, they show up with their guns drawn, and there's this guy in a vehicle that I guess it was reported stolen. The public works person that was driving by probably read the license plate with some machine and uh, reported it that it came up stolen. So the police, uh, this is overkill and stuff, but like cop car after cop car after cop car, you know, point their gun at him, and then they take the guy into custody and whatnot. But, I mean, it's crazy. Everything they're doing is overkill. I got it on tape. So this I was your chance, daughter. Pete. I mean, this was your chance to uh, pull, pull out your gat and start blasting. That's what you've called to advocate on the show. I don't agree with it. I don't advocate I that. But... AK, I didn't have my rocket launcher or my pineapple grenades or my AK-47 uh, uh, handy. Well, then. What I don't a surprise. Wish, I don't wish to do people harm. They didn't try to attack me, so I don't have a right to defend myself. But, but you don't anyway, you have the right uh, to defend the other guy? He was guilty. How do you he know that? He hasn't been proven smart. guilty in a court of law. Well, you know what? It was it, it was reported stolen. Either he doesn't know what the hell he's doing driving a stolen car, or he stole it. So yeah, uh, this is what I'm sort of wondering here: is is isn't this really just a a good point for these uh, license plate readers? The cops were able to get back somebody's car. How often does that happen? 1984, and you know, in the and it, it took was, like a minute. But this is Long Beach, you know, but I mean, we're in a big brother society, but mark my words, you know, the people have nothing to lose or they feel they have nothing to lose. They're the person in the vehicle. They're going to just pineapple grenade and unload. And, you know, you watch. That's why they want to take the guns from the veterans and people. And that's why they want to try to intimidate us. When I was done filming, one of the police that was standing guard, he tried to intimidate me. He didn't say anything, but I know what he was doing because I saw him in the body language of another car. I know that they, they, they were motioning to me and the other guy, and what happened is he was in. I told him to get get off our private property, and he was he, he left. But yeah, they were trying to intimidate me because they saw me. Well, filming that's what the police do. Paparazzi. Thanks for the call, Pete. Toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. The police are trained to be intimidating. That is their gig. They want to, uh, you know, make you believe that they're in charge and uh, that you can't question them and that you can't film them. And look, I don't get along uh, with Pete's viewpoint. I don't think that being violent toward the police is okay. And obviously, he doesn't think it's okay in uh, every circumstance. So I'm glad to hear that uh, that he wasn't touting that particular viewpoint today. today. But uh, yeah, you know, recording the police—that's going to get some of them upset. That that could result 
in you having your camera stolen from you. It could result in you being arrested. Our friend James Cleveland, who actually was down at the Ross Ulbrich trial today, uh, he was one of the folks outside holding signs. He was arrested uh, last summer in 2014. He was arrested for recording video of the police. He recently went to court, and he defended himself, I thought, very, very well on those criminal charges. He has yet to be uh, con- convicted. That The judge has yet to rule in Took that it particular under case. kind of thing? Yes, yes. So that uh, that will likely be coming very soon, I would imagine, because the trial happened at the very end of 2014, like on the 30th or something like that. So we'll probably see a ruling on that relatively soon. But those cops arrested James, in my opinion, because he was recording video of them, because he was in a place that they thought was too close, but James thought was well enough away from the situation. It was a suicide attempt. And he moved, uh, the, the cops, he moved for the police when they sa- asked him yes. to move. He just um, didn't go as far as they wanted him to because they moved... They they moved him to one point, and then they said, don't cross this line. Or the cop said, don't cross this line. He, he agreed to not cross that line. And then another cop came up and said he needed to keep moving back. Right. At some point or another, when are you the press? When does the press get to say, you know what? I can't get a shot from yeah. here. You're just moving me so I can't get a shot. Exactly. And that's really the difficulty was when you t- when you take these you know terms, legal terms like reasonable and that sort of thing, is there's either freedom of the press or there isn't. And as far as I'm concerned, a member of the press should be able to get into, you know, where the action is. And if they take a bullet, that's what happens. There is not true freedom of the press. It's better here than in other places. I don't want somebody to call in and say, you guys, it's worse than all these other countries. Just imagine if you were in Addis Ababa. You'd be dead right now. Like, you know, <laughs> Where was that? Addis, Adam on a Sababa? What did you Addis say? Addis Ababa? <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's it's uh, yes, it's worse in, El- in uh, other countries, but it's it's bad in a lot of ways here. I mean, you've got police intimidating people. If you go to photographyisnotacrime.com, there's no shortage of it. Not just police. There's a new video up recently of a fire chief grabbing one of the Photography Is Not A Crime guy's videos uh, or his video devices. Right, in, He's just standing there recording the guy. Dude reaches out and grabs it like it's his. And then he lets it go. He doesn't actually take the the uh, recording device. He grabs it and then sort of, I think, realizes what he just did, mm-hmm. lets it go, and then starts making excuses about, oh, how he just wanted to see what was on it. Yeah, you know, the, the, the fire, firemen don't get the training that cops do, but if I can make a generalization as a fireman, you know... You're the personality type that's going to take action when something occurs, right? Like, so, you know, if they feel threatened in whatever way, they're likely to take action. This fireman left a building and walked like 300 feet to approach this guy (laughs) to do this. Wasn't like he was caught off guard or something. More coming up. 855 450 free. We'll uh, talk to you more about the Russ Ulbricht trial situation that was developing today. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people, like when the jeweler ruined my ring and wouldn't do anything about it. But when my Legal Shield attorney called him and told him what my rights were, I received a check for over $2,100. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. Again, 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. I lost 18 pounds in just four days. Hi, I'm James Zetta. If you're like me, you've already tried and failed at many diet and weight loss plans. The 18 and 4 weight loss plan requires no exercising, no diet pills or additives, no laxatives, no meal replacements, and no diet drinks. The 18 and 4 program is crystal clear with a day-to-day, step-by-step, and meal-to-meal guide. If you're not satisfied with your results, I will give you my 30-day full money-back guarantee. Go to 18and4.com. That's the number 18, I-N, the number 4.com. The Onion looks back at This Week in History. On May 6, 1937, the explosion of the German passenger ship Hindenburg brought cheer to an entire generation of Americans in the midst of the Great Depression. The souls of the American people were fleetingly revitalized by the flame engulfed Zeppelin and the shrill screams of burning passengers leaping to their heartwarming deaths. Oh my, it's burst into flames. The burning embers and charred flesh are cascading splendidly onto the mooring mast. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the most terrific thing I've ever seen. Oh, the luminosity, the gaiety. And on May 7th, 2000, Vladimir Putin became president of Russia after promising citizens he could bend anything they gave him with just his bare hands. And that was what happened this week in history. In the words of the Italian philosopher Niccolo Machiavelli, 
Whoever wants to foresee the future must first look at the past and then imagine all that old stuff looking more futury and space-like. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You may bring up anything you'd like. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. LegalZoom.com is a great place to go take care of those legal documents that are such a pain in our lives. But they're also expensive if you're going to go through some attorney or something like that. Now, LegalZoom.com, they're not a bunch of attorneys, but they were started by an attorney. And what they do is they create legal documents by asking you questions, and they're accepted in all 50 states. Millions of people have used LegalZoom.com. And you can, you know, whether it's, I've got this giant list here, whether it's a divorce or a living trust or a living will or a will or a trademark or a patent, or a business annual report, an LLC, a not-for-profit annual report, whatever it is you might need, they've got it likely over there. So before you pay a bunch of money for paperwork or try to fabricate your own, go to LegalZoom.com. I got my will there, and if you don't have a will, you need one. Use coupon code FTL to save 10 bucks on your order. It's LegalZoom.com. All right, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype. Skype username is LRN.FM. Talking about the Silk Road, Ross Ulbricht trial. Breaking news tonight is that he has admitted via his attorney's uh, opening statement today that he was the creator of the Silk Road, but says he didn't continue operating the site after a short time. I did it, but I didn't do it. And he's also saying he was framed by the site's real operator who has yet to be revealed. Mm. Now, uh, whether they will be able to reveal who that person is, I, I don't know. Um, I don't imagine he knows who that other person is. But then again, the uh, understanding I have is that they did find information on his laptop, allegedly, that identified some of the other operators of the site. So, you know, I don't know. We're going to find out more about that as uh, as time goes on or the allegations. Now, it seems like his defense attorney is is saying that somehow that evidence was planted, that the evidence on the laptop that they claim they found him using in a library in San Francisco when they arrested him, they say that he was in the administrative end, uh, the back end of the Silk Road, which seems pretty damning. 
But they're saying that that's evidence that was planted there and that Ross wasn't actually doing that. Mm. At least that's my understanding of what uh, was written over at Wire.com by Andy Greenberg today. There was a press conference this afternoon after the trial. John Bush from the Liberty Beat was involved in that press conference. I've yet to see that footage, but Derek J. Freeman has uh, has video from the press conference, and that will be released later on tonight at freekeen.com, so stay tuned for that. Uh, if you want to see some pictures from outside of the trial, some uh, pics of the various different activists and some of the creative signs that they had, you can uh, go to freekeen.com. It is the top story there right now. There are some great signs and some great pictures from today's uh, protest. But yeah. it sounds like the uh, uh, Ross Albrecht's lawyers want all that stuff to stop. They don't want the activists activisting. Well, and that's a that is an interesting bone of contention, right? Because the the attorneys cannot, you know, they can't force the guys to stop out front. Sure. Now, you know, maybe the attorney asking for people to stop holding signs and to stop talking to potential jurors and that kind of thing, uh, maybe that will be enough. Maybe that will be enough to persuade the people out front to stop. But whenever you're doing public activism, one thing you can't control is who the hell shows up to join you. That's true. So, you know, for all we know, an agent provocateur will go out there tomorrow or somebody who just doesn't give a damn and just, you know, continue on with holding signs. And then the judge will then, she's promised to make the jury anonymous and sequester them. So right now, I'm surprised the jury's not sequestered in a trial this large. And maybe what she means by sequester is meaning more carefully sequester, because doesn't the government normally, like, in a trial like this, put the jurors up in a hotel? Or is that just happen in the movies? That uh, Mostly in the movies. So they're wow. in, in many cases, they're going home at night, and they're just told, now don't look this up on the internet. That wouldn't be acceptable. Mm -hmm. So they're going home at night and that sort of thing. Mm. It's rare. O.J. Simpson uh, is obviously a, uh, you know, uh, is, is not the, you know, doesn't stick to this rule. But in most cases, yeah, um, you know, people are going home at night. So, okay, that's interesting. And I presume in Manhattan they're pulling from, I wonder how far away. Like, how does a federal jury selection work? We know that here in New Hampshire, if they're picking jury, num uh, jury names, they're coming from either the voter rolls or the driver's license. So they mix all those names in together, and then they randomly pull from those names, from mm -hmm. what I understand. How does it work with a federal court? From how far away Right, they're not coming they in from people? Philadelphia, right? I don't know. I mean, no. how far does the how far does the district of the Man, uh, the Manhattan court roll out? I don't know. You it's know, an interesting question. Are people driving in from Connecticut, uh, from the northern part of of New York. Uh, I'd be upset if I had to come into, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. if I had an hour and a half commute for jury uh, duty for six weeks. I know there's only. I think you'd have to put me up at a hotel at that point. Yeah, I mean, I'm guessing there's probably another federal district court in the northern part of the state, so it's probably there's not. There's probably another federal district court in the northern part of the city. Of New York, <laughs> yeah, it could be. Um, I don't know about that, Mark. This one is right next to the Supreme Court, from from what I understand, uh, the New York Supreme Court. So uh, there's a lot to talk about here, and you're welcome to share your thoughts. Your uh, thoughts, especially after finding out the revelation that Ross Ulbricht is. The creator of the Silk Road. That's the bombshell from today. I mean, there's no doubt that's a big, big, big news. I don't think it's a bombshell, frankly. Well, I, I actually had speculated that he could have been, uh, you know, a, a set up as a patsy. And that's well, exactly the Well, is he a patsy or not? I mean, if well, you're the creator of the website, claiming that somebody's a patsy is not claiming that they set up the website and now they're being okay. framed, okay? Well, but he is saying he's been, he's been framed, right? He's saying that, uh, that he did not operate the website after a certain period of time, a fairly short period of time, that it was in someone else's hands. Somehow they, they uh, tricked him or something or bribed him or whatever. I don't know what the, what the story is going to be there. They somehow brought him back in to set him up to take the fall for, the, for operating this website. What I've thought all along, um, for me, if you want to know what I've thought, is is they caught this guy with his computer open up the library in um, in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, he's the Dread Pirate Roberts, and I think he's been the Dread Pirate Roberts all along. Um, and why would he go to the library to do this kind of? Why work? is he still in America? Why? Yeah. I mean, none of this stuff makes any sense to me. Once you tell me. Dread Pirate Roberts is, was caught in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Every All the sense runs out of the situation. Now, I don't know, but I tend to think that he's being set up on the murder charge stuff so that they can make his, these, these charges look worse. They make him look at, like a real kingpin. 
So Daryl just sent me the qualifications for jury service from the federal government. You have to be a so-called U.S. citizen, be 18 years of age, reside primarily in the judicial district for one year, be adequately proficient in English to satisfactorily complete the juror qualification form, have no disqualifying mental or physical condition, not currently be subject to felony charges punishable by imprisonment for more than a year, and have never been convicted of a felony unless your civil rights have been legally restored. And I'm out of that. Yeah, so I guess I'm still wondering where they get the names from. Is it income tax forms? Where do they pull the names? Social Security? How do they get that information? I don't know. Just curious. You can share your thoughts here with us. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I've been following along with the various different Silk Road uh, posts throughout the day today. The other big outrage, of course, is how the jurors have been treated as essentially a political pawn by the judge. Yeah. She doesn't like the fact that there are activists out front. All she wants is enough butts to fill those seats so that she can get a conviction. This yeah. lady has shown what she believes. She has given every every motion has it seems has gone to the prosecution just and about every one like of them, nothing yeah. to the defense. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's totally a setup. It's, you know, as I pointed out in my blog post at freekeen.com, the judge and the prosecutor are on the same team. Not only do they get paid by the same group, the federal government, they're getting the same paycheck signed by whoever. Um, not only is that the case, but as you pointed out, she is totally in the prosecution's pocket and is doing everything that they've asked to the point where she's even restricted the witness list to where the defense only found out about the witnesses right. a matter of days ago. She's fi- she's violated my understanding of sort of the you know the judicial system you know decades and and centuries of of uh, law a precedent here. She just decided eh, you can't have the witness list until just a couple of days before. You can't you really can't prepare. All right, so you can share your thoughts here. There's uh, there's other stuff to talk about here tonight if we get the chance. Venezuela, things are pretty insane in Venezuela, and we haven't talked about what's been going on over there in a little while, so we'll give you an update on that. And maybe you were at this uh, Ross Ulbricht trial today or outside, and you want to share your experiences. This is Free Talk Live. For 20 years, you've trusted Lumber Liquidators for the best deals on the best selection of floors. Well, this week, get even more deals in our January flooring sale. One beautiful hardwood, get pre-finished solid hardwood from $189. How about gorgeous bamboo that's twice as hard as oak? We've got strand bamboo for $219. Looking for top quality laminate? This week, at almost half off our thickest and best laminate. Plus other great flooring deals and 18-month special financing. Don't wait. The January flooring sale's going on now. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. DB Books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. So many other formulations out there contain toxic ingredients, synthetic additives, and even GMOs. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity experience of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family visit infowarslife.com or call 1-888-253-3139 that's infowarslife.com Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! What's the problem, officer? 
Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 you can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Talk live, dial on in toll free here and bring up whatever's on your mind. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. So feel free to do that and bring up anything you want. I'm just uh, looking through at the various different news surrounding the Silk Road uh, trial, the trial of Ross Ulbricht that kicked off today is expected to last four to six weeks this is a trial that is being touted as something that could change the face of law enforcement and the internet it's in that uh, you know if ross ulbricht is found guilty of all of these different counts that that could somehow lead the government to being more likely to finding webmasters to being responsible for the content of their websites and uh, and there's also big questions as far as you know can they really prove that Ross Ulbricht was the Dread Pirate Roberts at the time of the arrest. He has admitted to having been Dread Pirate Roberts in the past, that he was the creator of the Silk Road, but ultimately handed over control to someone else. Uh, looking through the Forbes article here that posts some of the photos of Ross Ulbricht and the federal evidence, federal agents took a photo of his computer at the Glen Park Library after arresting him on October 1st, 2013, the photo shows his computer username as Frosty. Earlier investigation linked that online name to Ulbricht's email address in a post that he'd made to a coding forum about Silk Road. This photo was released as evidence back in November. So we actually have a picture from just moments after the arrest where they snapped a picture of the screen of his laptop. What did it allegedly look like at that time? And uh, the name Frosty is in the upper right-hand corner. So... What that is in reference to, I, having read the indictment of Ross Ulbricht when he was arrested back in 2013, the, that username had to do with a post. The The investigator of the, the federal government's investigator that was the primary agent on this case, he claimed that he wanted to find the first mention of the Silk Road. Go, Let's go back in time and find the place on the Internet where the Silk Road was very first mentioned. Okay. And they found that. And the person who posted about that, the username or the email address associated with it, I forget was which one, was Frosty. Frosty. That's the idea. Yeah. So the idea being that, okay, Ross Ulbricht is Frosty, is what they're alleging, and that Ross Ulbricht was Frosty, and he posted that first post like, hey, you know, come check out this underground drug market on the tour. You know, that kind of thing. The first yeah. promotional post about the Silk Road. And it sounds like that might might have been the case, right? Like if Ross is admitting to having been uh, Dread Pirate Roberts, the creator of the website, then it would make sense that he was frosty. He was frosty. 
right? So uh, that's some of the uh, evidence that has already been revealed. Uh, they also have uh, another picture which suggests that Ulbricht maintained a special administrative account to oversee Silk Road called the Mastermind. It's a special tour-based URL. The page displays an account that had nearly $6.8 million worth of Bitcoins in it at that time. The photo was also released as evidence. So this is the account that they claim that Ulbricht was logged into at the time that they arrested him at the library, the so-called mastermind account. That photo uh, has been released as mm. well. So uh, continue here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Another picture shown here on the Forbes story, and I'll, I'll link to these on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. If you would like to access those, you can go to news.freetalklive.com to follow us in whatever your favorite way is. Uh, federal agents also took another photo at the Glen Park Library. This photo suggests that Ulbricht kept a special username when making Silk Road-related correspondence, possibly through Tor-supported online messaging service TorChat. The username was Dread. This photo was released in, again, in their pack of evidence released in November. So, you know, they're going to be making a pretty, what seems like is going to be a pretty strong case. And it's going to be a, a real challenge for the defense to uh, to somehow pitch their story that this was all a setup, that Ross was framed, and they're going to have to get these government guy jury people to believe this story. This is a tough, tough case. Yep, I I I don't have I, I feel very bad for this guy. Um, if he he's a hero for sure. For well, what he's, he's not done. a hero if if he's if he's guilty of these murder charges um, that they that they have not convicted him of that they've just kind of laid out mm -hmm. there um, and that they're allowing the prosecution to talk about without convicting him of, which I find to be reprehensible. If he's guilty of that, there's no way I'm going to call him a hero. But um, at this point, the guy is innocent. It's my job to presume him innocent until proven guilty, and they haven't proven him guilty of that. Well, right, and I was I doubted it the first time I heard those claims because right. I tend to doubt them too. Ross Ulbricht and Dread Pirate Roberts were both, uh, you know, the posts that Dread Pirate Roberts made online throughout its history, throughout it its history, um, it had been very libertarian, you know, very voluntarist, very peaceful sounding oriented things. Now the argument, Mark, for what, let's say it's true. Let's say that the hitman allegations are true. There is an argument, kind of a liberty libertarian argument that can be made to say that Ulbricht would have been within his rights to do what he did. So if somebody is going to, let's say, okay, so he's working with one of these people. One of the, one of the stories- I would definitely need to hear more. Is that he was, uh, one of the stories is that he was working with this person on the Silk Road and the person got busted or something like that in some way. And that that person was going to roll on Ross and thereby- How can you possibly Ross know if somebody's going to do that? That's, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's uh, pre-crime. If they haven't, yep, I understand. I understand what you're I saying. I wouldn't there. allow the government to do that. Yeah, the idea being that the person was uh, was going to roll on Ross and put him in jeopardy. You of can going use to deadly force if deadly force is going to be used on you. Right? Is it considered deadly force if you're going to go to prison for the rest of your life? I, I would think that I would think if somebody's going to snitch argument, on you. I would to, think it, I would think there's an argument yeah. for that, um, but only if you're innocent of it. If the person's going to tell the truth, and then the government's going to um, see, there's nothing wrong with telling the truth. So if I claim that you're running an dr uh, online drug marketplace to the government, I'm not the one who's initiating force on you. Um, actually, the government snitch, is. It's, well, but snitching is allowing the government to initiate that force. Understood. And there is something wrong with snitching, even I, if it is the truth. I don't think that it's okay um, to snitch on somebody who hasn't done anything to harm anyone else because I understand the consequences of it. But if you're talking about a sort of libertarian world, the person who's snitching is only telling the truth. They're not actually initiating force. The initiator of force is the government agents that are mm -hmm. then saying, you have told us the truth. Our silly laws allow us to harm you if, if somebody tells the truth on the Yeah, but if you like know this. that by telling the truth that that person is going to have force initiated against them, isn't that to, doesn't that to some extent make you guilty? If your philosophical, uh, if your philosophy requires someone else to lie, you've got a crappy philosophy. 
Well, you can just not talk. That's I, a good. I don't it's a recall. Good, it's a good option, but now you're ag- ag- requiring somebody else to sort of be courageous and informed on a subject. It's difficult to know. Whether well, yeah. You- I mean, when you enter into this agreement to run the Silk Road to join the the good ship of the Dread Pirate Roberts, you presumably would enter into a pact to understand that this is a secret organization that you know you're agreeing to not violate the secrecy and the sanctity of that organization. We need a death pack for Free Talk Live. We could like sign it tonight after the, well, the show. We just type something up that uh, you know if 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 you say anything bad that I don't like about me, I can kill you. And then um, you know I don't know exactly what you'd say, but you know like that'd be awesome, right? Like you just sign no. our contract. Then this isn't a secret organization. We're not trying to hide in the shadows, and you know we're not facing federal prison time for talking on the radio. But these guys <laughs> were facing the rest of their lives in prison. They you know. They they were they should have been pledging their lives and their sacred honor. I mean that's the kind of level of uh, of agreement we should be talking about here. So to violate an agreement like that. Is, I don't know that that agreement was made, um, but it probably should have been. Yeah, it sh- well, it sh- I don't know if it was explicitly made, but it certainly should have oh, been I implicit. I don't know that you have an implicitly have a death pact. I'm not sure that those exist. Look, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm not actually <laughs> arguing for... I, I'm not actually arguing for the position that uh, that you know a hitman <laughs> would be close. justified. I'm just saying there is an argument for it. <laughs> I'm not taking that argument. I was just playing uh, devil's advocate on that one. I think that uh, you know th- that there is an argument for it. Now, whether or not it was justified or not, I'd love to hear from you. What do you think? Was if if Ross Ulbricht was involved in the alleged murders for hire? Is there a legitimate reason for that, you know, to protect his website from these people who are willing to aggress against him? I don't know. I don't think there's a real firm answer on that. And at least I don't feel well, like there's a firm I answer. I can tell you, so t- trying to turn it around in my mind, I can tell you that the average person out there can be convinced that it's okay to say, frag your officer. Um, if you've got a uh, an officer leading your platoon, a lieutenant, a butter bar leading your platoon, and he is completely incompetent and shows not just incompetence, but sort of willful, um, mm-hmm. uh, willful courageous ignorance, okay. um, like that he's going to get us all killed. That I think that there's a pretty good argument that people would make, like, oh, okay, you fragged him, all right. Mutiny. Like, like Mutiny. Yeah, like, in that circumstance, it would be okay. I don't know. I'm just trying to look at it from both sides here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Madness in Venezuela. We'll tell you what's happening coming up. It's Free Talk Live. Jeff Woolery here. You know, I've talked before about Australian Dream, the effective arthritis pain relief cream that doesn't burn, isn't greasy, and has no odor. Now there's new Australian Dream back pain cream with all those great benefits. But this penetrating formula can help relieve your simple back pain. And it's backed by an empty jar guarantee. If you're not satisfied, you can send back the empty jar for a full refund. But I don't think you will, because Australian Dream really works. Don't let back pain ruin your day. Get Australian Dream Back Pain Cream at Walgreens. Gabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 
This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, January 13th, 2015. Gold is trading at $1,233, silver at $16.62, and Bitcoin is trading around $247. Today's precious metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. How much food is in your pantry right now? Could you feed your family for two weeks, one week? How about for even three days without any help? Keeping an emergency food storage kit is the most effective way to begin to ensure your family's well-being during an emergency. eFoods Direct is food security for whatever the future holds. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Bean or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, on Monday, the U.S. Senate was briefly interrupted by a group of anti-torture protesters shouting from the chamber's balcony. During a speech from Senator Richard Durbin, protesters stood up and began chanting, prosecute torture. The protesters were attempting to bring attention to the recent Senate report on CIA torture, which found the Bush and Obama administrations allowed suspected terrorists to face extreme conditions of torture. The protesters were removed by Capitol Hill security. Protesters calling for an end to police brutality and more accountability interrupted a Seattle City Council meeting with singing and shouting. The protesters called for justice for Mike Brown, Eric Garner, and other victims of police abuse. During the public comment period, critics of the Seattle Police Department spoke about the department responding violently to peaceful protests. Seattle Police Chief Kathleen O'Toole and other Seattle Police Department officials took questions from Seattle residents who were in attendance. In response to the recent terror attacks in Paris, Officials with the Department of Homeland Security announced an increase in security at federal buildings and enhanced security screenings at airports. Homeland Security Secretary Johnson stated there was no specific credible intelligence of an attack and called the increased security a precaution. The TSA is expected to also increase random searches of passengers and luggage. Today's broadcast of the Liberty Beat is sponsored by My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more, go to LibertyBeat.com slash advertise. This is The Liberty Beat for Tuesday, January 13th, 2015. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com. Members of the Zeltal community of Chiapas were shot at by Mexican state police after blocking a roadway entrance to the waterfalls of Agua Azul. The Zeltal were resisting the theft of their land when the police began shooting rubber bullets and live ammunition. Intercontinental Cry reports the battle lasted about 15 to 20 minutes, with the indigenous community driving the police back. The Zeltal are adherents to a manifesto issued by the Zapatista Army of National Liberation in 2005. A study published on the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences has found that a chemical alternative to BPA also causes health problems in fish embryos. Researchers at the University of Calgary found that BPS causes changes in the brain development of zebrafish, causing them to become hyperactive. The team tested both chemicals on the fish at levels comparable to those found in Alberta's Bow and Old Man Rivers near the Rocky Mountains. More research will be needed to find whether BPS will have similar effects in human fetuses. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Support also comes from the Conscious Resistance Network. Videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the Conscious Resistance at theconsciousresistance.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, January 13th, 2015. Make sure you check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile.
After excitedly posting an image of a Lamborghini Rebenton to his Facebook account earlier this afternoon, 38-year-old little boy Nick Weber talked to Onion reporters about his passion for fast cars. When I saw that car, I was like, whoa, it was so cool. I had to show it to all my friends. I like red cars the best, but only ones that are really, really fast. I can't wait to get one when I'm older. I'm going to get the fastest car in the whole world. <laughs> Though Weber also frequently posts about his other interests, which include motorcycles, fighter jets, and Marvel superhero Iron Man, the nearly 40-year-old small child confirmed that sports cars are his favorite, and the picture of the bright yellow Lamborghini has already garnered 15 likes and 9 comments from other enthused middle-aged children who are friends with Weber on the social networking site. My best friend Bradley, he sent me a picture of a blue convertible that's so awesome, it has these big wheels, and even has a racing stripe on it. After watching several online videos of fast cars and eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for lunch, the homeowning little tyke went to his room to take a nap. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you may bring up whatever's on your mind. Venezuela and the madness going on. Their shortages are just getting worse, and the military has now been brought in to guard grocery stores. We'll explain more about what's going on there. The we tonight includes me, Ian. And me, Mark. And you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com where you can enjoy all kinds of features just uh, waiting there for you. You get to create the content of the website. So what's there on the front page was created by listeners like you. It was voted upon by listeners like you. And uh, it's a Reddit-based system, so it's free. You just go there, use uh, Free Talk Live's account, combine that with your Reddit account. It's a very uh, short, simple process. And at that point, then uh, you'll be able to interact. You'll be able to submit content and vote on what's already there. And, of course, a lot of people are talking about the Silk Road trial, a.k.a. the trial of Ross Ulbricht. If you're just now tuning in, we are expecting to hear from uh, our friends Michelle Seven, uh, John Bush from Austin, Texas, and co-host of ours, uh, Derek J. Freeman. They are all together in New York City right now, and they're going to give us the kind of the inside scoop. We've been covering the trial from the outside perspective, having uh, you know seen what we can see from the various different media that has been there covering this. Our friends have been out there creating their own media as well, and I believe Michelle is with us here via Skype. Michelle, are you there? It's speakerphone. Yes, yes, Can you it hear is me? speakerphone. I don't know if she knows she's on the air yet. Michelle. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Ian. Hey. How are you? I'm doing well. It's great to hear your voice, and you sound like you're in good spirits, all things considered, uh, considering that you were within the clutches of the federal uh, goons today yeah. in their courthouse. I've also been smoking weed with, like, my favorite activists <laughs> from all over the country, and that's always a really good time. Are you saying there's weed smoking going on at the Silk Road trial? I am shocked, Michelle. <laughs> Shocked. Can you imagine in my in my truck with the like the illegal plates and things? I know. <laughs> so right. you probably haven't been. Let's privy- try to pull it here together, here, folks. So Michelle, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, you were um, supposedly in some sort of meeting earlier, and you couldn't make it on. I'm glad you were able to make it to us here uh, tonight because you were actually in court throughout the day today. Is that right? That's correct. So as you know, um, and thank you so much for interviewing us, uh, Julia and I, a week ago yeah. when we were um, we had just finished making that video out in front of the courthouse where she made a call to action. And that's when um, Derek and I kind of blasted the Free State Project a little bit about like, where are the activists? And, and you know, lit a fire under some people. And um, the response was not... I I think it's overwhelming when you've got 15 people drop their lives and fly in from California and and hitchhike up from Florida and fly out from Texas and they're sleeping on couches. No one is like getting rich off this. Everyone really like Roger Veer. Thank you, Roger Veer. And a few other anonymous donors, a few people online on Twitter and things donated. And we had like um, around 10 Bitcoin or so, nine or so that we were able to use to get people out here. And it didn't matter that the price of Bitcoin is down or whatever. As soon as people knew, these activists knew that they were being supported and assisted in in their jobs, it was invigorating and inspiring. And I'm really stoked to be around like 
just some of my favorite activists that I've been working with like for five to 10 years and it's great. So they're each experts in their individual area. We've got Jim Babb, who is jury nullification. And I've got something to say about that. That's mm-hmm. very interesting. We've got Derek J, obviously down from New Hampshire. Hey, hey, hey. he's in the house. And um, he brought, um, <laughs> you know, a handful, including Will Kostrick, who I haven't seen for a while, and that's great. And yeah, there was a good crew that actually came down, and it, it really kind of came together at the last minute. Uh, some people yeah. were able to go down. In fact, uh, including uh, James Cleveland, who is more pop- popularly known as Robin Hood, a mastermind in his own right, according to uh, the Colbert Report. He uh, He's there, and he actually is a business owner, so he took time off from running his business to go down there, along with his business partner, uh, Jay Freeville, who are they're both... Uh, uh, great bloggers over at freekeen.com. So there was a couple carloads of, uh, of activists that ended up heading down there. So I was really glad to see that. Yes. So the only area that we really don't have represented in the contiguous U.S. is uh, is the north or the Midwest. I mean, we really do have them from all over. So- Neat. And we thought um, that we would be able to get in with press passes, which thank you very much for offering me um, a Free Talk Live press pass. I appreciate that. Well, yeah. So tell me more about that, Michelle, because last week you contacted me saying that it was your belief that people who were press could get a cell phone into the courtroom. That was surprising to me, considering I've been to federal court in New Hampshire before, and they don't let anybody bring uh, cell, uh, cell phones in there. Uh, it was interesting to me that they would make an excuse or they'd uh, you know give the press a pass in that way. Uh, or make an exception, yeah. So, like, what happened, because you were going to have a press pass courtesy of Free Talk Live, but apparently no one, not uh, John from the, the Liberty Beat or Derek J with Peace News Now, no one was was uh, granted the ability to bring a cell phone in. What would happen? What was that process like for you? Well, that's correct. And actually, to just go back a little bit, um, Kat Bleich, who is John Bush's wife, um, and has just been like, Woo! Just like a, an inferno, just a twirling dervish of, of you know, I don't, she's gotten, she has um, at Silk Road uh, trial up on Twitter so you can follow mm-hmm. for information. She has everything funneling every time anyone um, tweets anything about Silk Road or Free Ross. So she has just been an amazing support crew to uh, Derek Bros and John Bush, who are both here from Liberty Beat. And they had intended to come and film. And what Kat had told me that she had been told was that they were going to be issued a electronic advice. That's one. And mm-hmm. electronic device. And so they were going to take in their phone and be able to tweet. I had, I had a press pass. So I thought I'd be able to, too. And I thought that maybe if Derek used peace news now, as opposed to free talk live, then he would also have one. So I thought we were covered. And I called, um, just a few days ago, I guess it was on Friday and discovered based on, you know, what I had experienced with you and, and what you were alluding to and mentioned in that the, Requests must be submitted two weeks prior to a trial. Oh, bastard. If you'd, have, have, if you'd have put it in two weeks prior, it had to have been in four weeks prior. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that it's to the discretion of the uh, of the judge. And in this case, to then now go back to redirect a FIJA, the judge named Catherine um, Forrest, who was formerly um, in the private sector and took quite a pay decrease in order to be a judge in uh, New York City at the Patrick Monahan uh, courthouse, where she is sitting atop her throne. I mean, I would really love to have like Diva Diva, you know, out with her. <laughs> Let me tell you, <laughs> her robe's got nothing on my coat, baby. But um, so so she's sitting upon <laughs> she's sitting up, upon her her thrown there as though she's holding court Mm -hmm. and in one moment she's being you know being gesturely and everything and getting people to chuckle and and catch a joke here and there as she is um you know going through the 90 prospective jurors and she was so condescending and patronizing but with a little bit of a toss toss of her hair and as though she's gonna like she's gonna use that femininity and whatever if you know if it suits her but she is a driven ambitious she is ambitious this is a Mm. power hungry woman who has some sort of aspirations beyond being a lawyer and being a judge obviously Mm -hmm. because you just don't go from your swanky life to being a lowly 
judge um, starting kind of in, in a way at the bottom unless you have some an ulterior motive and agenda. And I really think this is the case that she's going to try to use to propel her into the public light and into the um, – into the make her a contender mm-hmm. for a political office in some way. This is just right for the taking. It is the first internet. She's totally carrying water for the prosecution. I mean, we talked about this earlier in the show tonight, how she's granted like every single motion basically that the prosecution has made and has, you know, ridiculously restricted the defense in the way that they can uh, present the case and has allowed the prosecution to, you know, just talk about all these allegations about right. Ross that have never been proven. The prosecution can call Ross. Albrecht a murderer without ever having convicted him of it. That's insane. Or charged him. Or charged right. him with I, it. I thought he was charged in Maryland. Well, there's an allegation that he's been charged in Maryland with, with one of them, but I don't know anything else about that. But Mi- this isn't Maryland. This is New York City. Right. M- uh, Michelle, hang on. If you can't, you can stick with us, right? Because I want to hear more yeah. about the jury selection process yeah. and how that went today, because you were there in the courthouse all day today. More with Michelle. Sa- She's live from New York City. Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800 691 6129. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877 357 9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Hey, I'm Ian Freeman, one of the hosts of Free Talk Live. I created Free Talk Live in 2002 as an alternative to traditional talk radio. I wanted a show where anyone could call in and bring up any topic without fear of being screened out. Combined with our libertarian, voluntarist viewpoints, Free Talk Live is a unique syndicated radio show heard on FM and AM radio stations, coast to coast and beyond. I moved from my birthplace of Florida to New Hampshire in 2006 as part of the Free State Project. I'm also the program director of LRN.FM, which I launched in 2009 to create a place to present the best liberty-oriented audio programs from around the globe. I perform liberty outreach of all sorts and have done civil disobedience, non-cooperation, and run for office multiple times. Much of that's covered on my blog at freekeen.com. Thank you for listening to our shows, and if you want to support our work, please visit amp.freetalklive.com and contribute just $5 a month to our effective liberty outreach. That's amp.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? 
Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. Freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's been an interesting day in New York City. The uh, Manhattan trial of Ross Ulbricht, the man accused of being Dread Pirate Roberts, who apparently, through his defense attorney, basically admitted to being Dread Pirate Roberts, at least the first Dread Pirate Roberts, the person who set up the Silk Road. That was my understanding of the reports that have come out of the trial in day number one today, just after jury selection. They, of course, went to the opening statements. Wired.com's Andy Greenberg did a great job summarizing that earlier, and uh, we've linked that over on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. If you want to access those, go to news.freetalklive.com. And if you want to get some precious metals, the prices are really low right now. Uh, you can go to gold.freetalklive.com. We've got gold and silver coins and pieces there for you to pick up. Uh, we work with Midas Resources, and they're going to get you your you know metal in hand. And I think that's the most important thing. You don't want to you don't want any situation where you don't have metal in hand. And they're going to get it to you. They're going to get it to you quickly, and they're going to get it to you at a great price. It's gold.freetalklive.com. I've done a great deal of business with them throughout the years, and. I'm happy about it. Gold.freetalklive.com. Michelle Seven is with us. She is live from New York City, uh, where she's hanging out with some of the other great activists that came there from all around the country to stand in support of Ross Ulbricht today outside in the very, very cold temperatures there in the city. So it was not exactly an easy uh, bit of activism that was being done, and it was, seemed like it was going on all day long. But, Michelle, you were inside for uh, most of the day doing court reporting and kind of eyeballing and watching the trial and that way you could report back to us and our uh, our wonderful listeners to what actually transpired today. So let's start with the jury selection process, shall we? Um, what what sort of things did you observe? What did you learn about that? Because you know we've certainly talked about how apparently they were they were telling jurors that if they had seen the activists with their signs out in front of the courthouse, that they weren't allowed to be on the jury. Is that right? Um, it was not proposed exactly like that, but good. There were uh, several questions that all of the jurors had been given, and so there was a reference to them. Such, and the questions were po- the question was posed as each prospective juror came up was, "Oh, did you uh, did you uh, say yes or affirmative to any of the lists?" So they didn't reiterate each time the questions, but they did highlight two particular topics. One was the general use of the signs. Sometimes they were referred to as pamphlets, which would have been the FIJA. Mm -hmm. And other time... Fully um, informed jury association. There were some activists out there handing out information about jury nullification. And from what I heard from Jim Babb, who was one of those folks doing that... Uh, that there apparently was mentioned in the trial or in the in the court that anyone who received one of those pamphlets was to not read it. Right. So jury nullification is a thousand-year right of juries to not only judge the person on trial, but to judge whether the law is just or unjust. This is absolutely legal, constitutional. The fact is, in the last hundred years or so, the, uh, the, the lawyers, or liars as we call them down in the South, the liars have decided uh, that you know nothing about the law. You are you, you're you nothing. You know nothing, John Snow. <laughs> you're a pawn in this. And so, uh, you know, they, they don't want you to have any power as a juror. Well, Just the, say yes or no. Well, and right. say yes. And the oh, process. So beyond, they don't want you to have any power as a juror. They want you to be so stupid. They want you to be uneducated, Mm -hmm. ignorant. Basically, if you got bonus points, if you'd never read a magazine or or a book. (laughs) As a juror, as one of the potential jurors. And so, So, right. So there were two, the focus was, as I was saying, um, on the pamphleting and the um, and the signage, which I'm going to come back to because mm-hmm. there was a threat made by the judge regarding that very right. issue. Yeah, I want to talk end. about that. And then the other thing was those people who had been involved with or who had a family member who was um, in law enforcement or uh, employed by a government agency, particularly in regard to um, cybersecurity or... Um, or uh, uh, um, cyber terrorism. There was a mention of that. So, so if there was 
job description in that vein that was related to the actual juror or to a uh, close family member, they were simply asked not to dismiss the fact that they're paid um, by the government, but rather that they were just asked, now, do you think that that's going to make you biased either for or against? It was such a softball. It was so ridiculous. So basically, this is what Julia Taransky said on her uh, tweets earlier today. She was tweeting throughout the trial at uh, her Twitter handle is Brave the World. She says that they were allowing the government jurors in, but they were preventing people who had seen the activist signs. What That led me to one of the questions I had for you, Michelle, which was I, here in New Hampshire, I know that the jury selection process is that you have three what are called peremptory challenges where you can just kick a juror out because you don't like the color of their hair or whatever. Uh, you don't need to give the reason for removing that juror. Was that what they were using when they were booting people, or did they seem to have more than three of them? I mean, was there a, a limit on how many people they could just boot off for no reason? There were six rounds, mm -hmm. and I was in overflow room, and so it was mm -hmm. really hard to see like a lot of the action that was happening. Um, but apparently... The each the prosecution and the defense had post-its, which is what the, the judge called them. And mm -hmm. I suppose that those were their, um, you know, those that they were kicking off or yep. whatever. And so 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 there's that. Let me just tell you, please, if I may, sure. just a few sure. different observations and highlights that I think I don't know if they were reported on by Andy Greenberg and stuff, but um, and wired and all that. Yeah, please. But they were just observations I made. So. They've established the prosecution is, you know, claiming off the bat that he was a kingpin and that he was um, he had a secret project, that he is a, um, a drug boss, quote unquote, and that he um, had two goals, which was one to sell drugs anonymously and two to hook new drug users <laughs> from the pop. And that he was um, first and foremost providing a shopping paradise. I have to say, despite the fact that yes, I am an you know I'm a weed smoker like everyone knows, and I talk up such a big game. I basically like take mommy hits just so that I can tolerate people or be tolerant to them. It's not like that big like I ever really get stoned, but I and I don't uh, use of the drugs. However. If I needed to, I certainly would want to, and I would like to, and I would like a safe way to get them. I want a drone to like deliver them to my apartment so I don't even have to go out in the cold to get them. <laughs> so the fact that the prosecution was was cornering this this poor young man, Ross Obrick, and calling him, you know, a really excellent entrepreneur. <laughs> So funny, like he wanted to make a profit. Mm, Can how dare you he? believe it? How dare, how dare he dare profit he? from making uh, the world a safer place? Exactly, and saying that he had um, that he had created such a a an expert um, way of of traf trafficking drugs and IDs as well as. Um, uh, what was the third thing? Trafficking drug. Oh, hacking. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth charge is, has to do with money laundering. Um, so, and that he, you know, what he, the website he created was designed to protect users and that he wanted to control the method of payment and that he wanted to make big commissions. Well, isn't that what business conducting a business is supposed to be? Sure, but I, a bunch of government jurors aren't going to understand their, that, right? If they work for the government, they don't understand thing one about running their own business. Michelle, can you, can you stick with us? I know you have more observations. I'd love to hear them. Sure. All right, more with sure. Michelle Seven. She's live from New York City in Manhattan. And, of course, you can call in toll-free here, 855-450-FREE, the Ross Ulbrich trial. She was there today. It's Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. 
Genesis is defined as an origin, creation, or the beginning. Genesis Communications Network began with the mission of providing you with the kind of compelling content you're listening to now. And at GCNlive.com, you'll find a free archive of our nation's history, narrated by GCN hosts. Explore, share, and pass down to future generations. GCN is the future of talk radio, but we should always strive to learn from our past. Together, we are GCNlive.com. GCN. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, and the toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733, and you can join us online at freetalklive.com. With you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. And me, Mark. And we also have a Michelle Seven with us here. We're going to continue uh, as she is reporting live from New York City in Manhattan out near the Federal District Court. Michelle, thanks for sticking with us here for the extended interview. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you for having me. Now, you I said you had it. some observations from being inside the uh, the courtroom today that you wanted to share, and I also had some questions. I want to definitely come back around to discussing the threat that was uh, leveled at the very end yeah. of the trial today, but what other things did you want to share with our audience about your experience? Okay, so I already mentioned to you that um, there was the difference in how 
they structured the the standard for people who had heard of the uh, pamphlets and the jury nullification and or seen the posters versus those who have been employed or their loved ones have been employed by the state that it just wasn't those the scales and measures weren't evenly weighed and mm -hmm. that was just so apparent and so obvious and then um two things happened that i thought were very interesting and i really um, if, if the, if the defense can carry this off with as much panache as I'm hoping, then, um, I think it'll be great. He, um, he got up and in his opening statements, he said that, uh, Josh Ulrich was, um, who Ross created Ulbrich. The, Ulbrich was who created the Silk Road website. Right. That was the big bombshell of the day. That was the big bombshell. Now, um, I have talked to people in the past uh, on dealing with um, people who provide negative, uh, negative um, attacks and things like that. And that is that, you know, someone accuses you, for example, of having sex with the quarterback. Tell them that not only did you have sex with the quarterback, you had sex with the whole team. And not only did you have sex with the whole team, their dads too, and you let their moms watch. So, so my strategy sometimes with some people is to take their accusation and instead of try to deny it when I know it's not true or it's none of their business, to just go so far that they have nowhere to go with it. If the defense attorney really has the guts to pull that one off, I will just, I will bow i will be so stoked because that is a really that is taking the bully and like turning their bullying on their head i approve i love that um he better though really have some balls of steel well you know? right it's going to be yeah. a tough case to prove that uh, ross ulbricht was dread pirate roberts that he started the website i don't know that he's no but they haven't said that he was the dread pirate roberts they said that he created the silk road website so there is so there's the question dread pirate roberts could be a he a she or a they or mm -hmm. could have as with the dread pirate roberts in the fairy tale um, story Princess Bride that it's it's an inherited position that gets right. passed on. It's a title. So, one so what you're saying yeah. is that he admitted to being the creator of the Silk Road, but not necessarily Dread Pirate Roberts. Yes. Huh. Okay. And I think that that's I think that that's important. And then the other thing that was um, quite you, you made mention of it was the threat, and that is that the. Uh, judge basically said, okay, if those signs and the um, jury, she didn't specify jury nullification. Mm -hmm. And she said this after the jury had been excused. So right. um, she said that, that um, if the, if the signage was out in front the next day at nine 30, that the jurors would be sequestered and that they would have to be kept away from their families. Why nine 30? What happens at nine 30? Is there something that like, that's is that important? That's when court begins. Begins. So the jury would presumably be arriving before 9.30. Correct. Okay. And then she she's going to, if there are uh, the signages out front, she's going to make the jury anonymous. How do you think that will be done? Well, um, they would use the same jury that they have, so it's not like they would dismiss the, those jurors and mm -hmm. go to alternates. They'll keep them and they'll post them, they'll put them in hotels and they'll have to eat, sleep, and drink their coffee with each other for the duration of the trial without having to, without being able to be exposed to any outside influence, including phone conversations with their family members or television or anything that could in any way influence them. Oh, that would make me pretty grumpy. Right, but okay, I get that. That's sequestering. But how did how would they make them anonymous? I mean, did you feel like they were going to somehow put them in another room, or like what would they do to make them anonymous? I mean, that's speculation. I, but I don't know, and I really don't know what that means. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of scared to find out what that means. I'm imagining <laughs> them putting like black bags over their heads. So what are the activists going to do? Because this is really, I mean, this is yeah, a nasty, nasty, nasty trick to say, oh yeah, well, if anybody enacts... Uh, if you, you know, use your free speech out front... Anybody in America, and any of 300 million people that happen to be in this country goes out and uses their free speech rights out in front of this courthouse and uh, informs people of their thousand-year right to uh, inform a jury... Uh, <laughs> You're right. Wait, wait. Why do when? No, my rights didn't come to me a thousand years ago. You, they came no, no. at the point of conception when I was a human being and not a dog. You don't not have a, a you don't have a right animal. as an individual. I have a mind. I have jury a nullification. Jury nullification isn't a human right. It is a jury right. So. 
no, 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 no. I am so tired of hearing people talk about deriving their rights from a piece of paper by a bunch of old people 200 years ago or more that have nothing to do with me, and none of them had a uterus, so they really know. Yeah, have maybe right's the wrong word, Mark. Maybe you were looking for, like, a power of the jury. It's I a suppose power it's a of power the of the jury, but— um, So I mean, the question still stands, though, Michelle. I mean, have you heard any discussion among the activists as to how they're going to handle yeah. this threat? And do you know, Ian, you're going to love this because you're the only one that you and I could like hold hands on this and look at each other and bat our eyes at one another. I was in a room full of my favorite activists, you know, here, and they're all anarchists. And five of them turned and looked at me and they said, you're just so extreme. <laughs> what did you say to deserve that? I mean, what what happened? I think I honestly think that there needs to be. I think we need to go after the judge, quite frankly, and kind of expose her and highlight her and um, that it would be it, that she has, I believe, and this is completely my speculation, that she has an agenda here and that her agenda is power driven. And where, where is power in the United States? If it's not in owning something, it's in it's in ruling people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so she's going for a political position and this is going to be her, you know, Michael Milken or her. Oh, you this know, is her moment. Yeah, for sure. This is her yeah. moment. So um, I think that we should, you know, put on uh, a tiara on her and put her in a pretty dress and give her an opportunity to to shine and have that spotlight on her. And I have no doubt whatsoever that with the present day uh, animosity that there is toward the state and toward particularly toward New York and the, the injustice system that occurs here, um, especially toward drug uh, related and victimless crime um, uh, issues that this is an opportunity where she is probably going to provide enough rope for herself to hang okay, herself. I see what you're saying there. That what you're are you going to do? Yeah, I, you, you <laughs> dodge the question, Michelle. I see you're saying you want to bring attention to this bad judge. You're no going to enthrone her in effigy? But, but, our, but, but you know, what does that have to do with the question about what will activists do in regards to her threats about not holding signs? And apparently the Ross Ulbricht attorney also begged uh, the courtroom to not hold signs. I don't know. I've got Julia, awesome, you know, gal who's been hand in hand with me on this, and John Bush and Derek Rose, who came up all the way from Texas, and they're all saying that we have to just totally back off and no signs and no pamphleting, and that we need to sit down and put our hands on our lap and be quiet. Thank you for putting words into my mouth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, no, I when I'm at a so. Jury nullification is a means to an end. The end is that people who do not commit crimes that have victims should not be put in cages. That's the end. Everyone should be able to do as they please as long as they don't interfere with other people mm -hmm. uh, with in pursuit. And the end in this case is for Ross Ulbrich to have the least bit, to be found not guilty or to have the most minimum sentence that could possibly happen for and the defense attorney has indicated that he believes it would be antithetical to Ross's case if people continue to pass out these pamphlets. So it raises a conscious of crisis, crisis of conscience for those who are trying to be consistent with the philosophy of liberty. John, and can you guys hold on for another segment? I love this interview. I'd love to keep keep this going. Can you hang on? Uh huh. We'll yeah. bring you back. I want to hear more of what John has to say here about what's going to happen tomorrow. It's Free Talk Live. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. For 20 years, you've trusted Lumber Liquidators for the best deals on the best selection of floors. Well, this week, get even more deals in our January flooring sale. One beautiful hardwood, get pre-finished solid hardwood from $189. How about gorgeous bamboo that's twice as hard as oak? We've got strand bamboo for $219. Looking for top quality laminate? This week, get almost half off our thickest and best laminate, plus other great flooring deals and 18-month special financing. Don't wait. The January flooring sale's going on now. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. The 
knowledge of the ancients. Tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutrition. Now is the time to secure Ancient Defense for you and your family. Visit AncientDefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's AncientDefense.com. I just heard the best sales pitch I've heard in a long time on an airplane. The flight attendant announced, If you paid more than $75 for your round-trip ticket, you overpaid. This is brilliant because everybody on the flight paid more, and I was struck by how all the road warriors stopped typing and reading and working and looked up. The announcement invited us to apply for the airline's credit card. And the sign-up bonus? Enough frequent flyer miles for a free round trip. Talk about turning lemons into lemonade. With some banks offering free credit cards, $75 is an outrage for an annual fee, but a bargain for airline tickets. For more tips on communicating more effectively, hit survivalspeech.com, where you can see how I got the CEO of another major airline to shower me with freebies. I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Moments remain here. Enough time to sneak your thoughts in if you dial in now at 855-450-FREE. Also, we do have Skype, but that's where Michelle Seven and John Bush are and Derek J. Freeman and all the other great activists uh, who happen to be with them at the moment in Manhattan uh, for the Ross Ulbricht trial. There were a number of activists that went down there to uh, yesterday from New Hampshire, people coming uh, from as far away as Austin, Texas, and even California, Florida, to come observe this trial and spend their own time and their own money to uh, to come up and do it. It's an amazing level of dedication from these great activists. And it's also amazing that y'all have spent the entire uh the entire hour here with us so thank you for that because i'm sure you'd rather be you know having a little bit of fun there before you have to crash for the night and get up bright and early again tomorrow morning it doesn't sound like they're missing too much well i mean yeah, they could be doing no, anything the party's else. right here in, right here in the in the uh, cab of my truck <laughs> so john bush uh from the liberty beat by the way you've got the the website to visit to get updates about this trial as it happens the libertybeat.com i've linked to is it, it the libertybeat.com that's correct okay um, and I've linked to uh, to the exact page where you're posting sort of live blogs as you can, because obviously you can't have a, a device in the courtroom. So I'm presuming, what do you have to do to actually update the website? You have to leave the entire courthouse, retrieve your phone from security, and then go outside and post? What's the process like to actually get information out of this courtroom? Well, thankfully, I have the ability to be in two places at one. So <laughs> at you're one such time. a Jedi. So while I'm at the... Uh, 
in New York City, my better half is in, in San Marcos, Texas, and she's actually the one that's manning the live feed there. Okay. I was playing on uh, manning the rig like I did with Antonio Beeler's case and just posting play-by-play. Instead, I wrote like 23 pages worth of notes that'll be deciphered into an article. But uh, she's there manning the fort, and she's posting all the updates from everybody that's doing stuff. And uh, Wired, ARS Technica, Reuters was there, Derek J's posting stuff, and she's keeping on top of all the— So you were in the courtroom basically all day then, just observing and taking notes, and then other people were sort of sneaking away to post updates on Twitter. Like, for instance, Julia Taransky, who we talked to earlier uh, or last week, she had posted a few updates throughout the, the day today. Uh, I presume they're she's confiscated. Right here in actually, and Derek J is taking photos of us, so he'll he'll up with something like Hi. that. But she's been um, she's been the one who has really been saying that we need to pull back because she was in the courtroom when the judge uh, made her her threats. When the yeah. judge is. Go, the, the judge, judge essentially threatened the jury, uh, using the right. jury as a political right. tool to try to crack down on free speech of the activists. You want to summarize um, what that was like? So the general feeling throughout the whole day today was she made very apparent note of the fact that there are people outside uh, distributing information that she did not like, such as holding posters and handing a pamphlet. Now, this isn't actually jury tampering because it's That's just speech right. outside the courtroom, but she's not happy with us. So uh, one of the questions that she would ask the jury was, did you catch a glimpse of a poster or did you receive a pamphlet and did you read it? And they said yes or no to this question. <laughs> Now, uh, some of them said yes, some of them may, I don't know what it goes on in the jury's minds, but this was a briefing process. So she's obviously conscious of it. Now, I also got wind of somebody, Justice, the man who is arbitrating and, uh, you know, doing the slides and making sure everything's in order. He said, the person in charge of the protest is sitting in the courtroom. What? Now, I don't know. They were referring to me or to Derek or to someone else. Cause somebody we who's were in, in charge house. of the protest. Right. <laughs> a group this of liberty activists. There's a there's somebody in charge. Somebody, somebody in charge of the protest is in the courtroom. So that this tells me that the um, the um, they knew that we were there. Yeah, they knew that we were listening, and they were sending us a very strict message. And the last thing uh, after the you know five o'clock. It ended. And after the jury left the room, this is the last thing that the judge said. I am concerned about the people outside and if they are pamphleting and protesting and they have signs out there tomorrow morning, I will make the decision to make the uh, jury anonymous. And I'm sure nobody wants that. And then the defense went out to say that we have nothing to do with these people, which is true. Uh, and we don't want the jury to be anonymous because that will hurt the case overall. How, and much, how much more could they hurt the case? That. So this is how it would hurt the case. Um, if the jury is made anonymous, that means they will be isolated in hotel rooms so that they refrain from getting any outside information from anybody, whether it's free speech or personal research, etc. So they, uh, the way that the prosecution has presented Ross is as kingpin drug lord, uh, murderer, for, uh, like a murderer, conspir conspirator for hire, all of this. So they will feel, they may feel threatened and they will be like, why are we isolated in a hotel room and being protected and isolated? So and to make, you, you think it'll make them feel family. like there might be, you know, Ross Ulbricht's putting a hit out on the jury or just right. something like that. Because the jury doesn't know why this is happening. Right. So they make their own assumptions. So in my mind right now, we did our job. Maybe the jury saw what they needed to see. Maybe they didn't. We were just enacting our free speech rights. We did what we could do. 
And wow. I just think that there should be twice as many signs tomorrow, which there could be. Because uh, <laughs> well, that's the thing. Is what I was saying earlier tonight is that you, it's you know, be twice as many tomorrow would be like booyah. Well, that's the thing, Michelle. Is what I was saying earlier tonight is that you can't control who shows up at a public event. So I mean, there could be whether it's Michelle who does it or some agent provocateur or who somebody who heard this show who just wants to see Ross Ulbricht spend the rest of his life in prison decides to go out and hold a sign. And this lady's gonna you know make up whatever mind she's gonna make up. I wouldn't hold a sign. Derek J, are you still? Is Derek still there? I'm here, and I got to tell you guys, this is really troubling to me because uh, I, I am I of Michelle's. Right <laughs> I am of Michelle's um, family th- uh, line of thinking on this. It's okay. uh, something that I, I put a, uh, a lot of effort into um, making this message very public. I, I don't you like. Did. You, you um, made some of those signs, as a matter of fact. Yeah. And I don't like being told uh, that people are being threatened on basically on my behalf. The fact that some of my actions resulted in um, threats. That's how they do it. People. That's how the state operates. So some activists are saying. Starts in kindergarten. Some activists are saying back down. Some are saying no, move no, forward. No, we were told no. No, I'm not saying no. to back no. down. Well, no. I'm I not saying to. I'm making signs too. And it's just a point of, okay, we are being. We are being cornered. The judge is going to do what the hell she wants to do. And mm-hmm. if it hurts Ross in the end, we all lose. Now, uh, you can no, go no. ideology. I think if she made no. a <laughs> Derek, I... Derek. Threat, and we back down, then she's going to think that she like, has power. I, uh, Derek, I wasn't saying that that you were saying you were going to back down. You're saying keep going. Other activists, John, who also has got a lot of great cred and street cred as an activist, is saying let's. No, let's they, go. they hey, all want to back down. They want to sh- leave me out there by myself. Hey, give it to me. Derek. You guys, I love the, you. Derek, what are you saying? Michelle's down putting down woods in your mouth. A person has been threatened. If this were a hostage sh- situation. The right thing to do would be to to pay off the person. Am I? No, 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 no. No, Listen, because because we already were effective. Day one, we brought it home. It was so powerful. The judge. They got a pay off, and they're not going to do anything. Michelle, don't shout. (laughs) You're on the radio. And they're not going to like. We were we were so good. The judge is threatening to keep the jury in the complete darkness. She wants to blindfold them, keep them from knowing anything, and she's afraid of people in the public square. I mean, what could be more successful? Day one was enough. I say, bring it home. We won. You're saying call call it okay. That it's uh, it feels painful to be inconsistent sometimes and to quote unquote back down as it's being tossed around, but at the end of the day. I'm there to support Ross Ulbricht, and jury nullification is a means to an end. The end mm-hmm. is peaceful people being thrown in cages, and right now Ross Ulbricht is could potentially face a lifetime in a in an effing cage. And his attorney, who Ross is entrusted to represent him lig- literally and legally, he's representing him. He made it very clear that he would prefer there not be any jury, jury nullification activism. And if that wasn't enough, his mother made it very clear. His father seems like more of an activist, but uh, I think everyone, and a lot what, of people are in agreement that perhaps uh, it would negatively affect the jury because they would fear fearful, and I'm sure that would yeah. they, that would. Lead them to I have to that say, I'm I'm on your side on this one, John Bush. I think that uh, you know, you I think you always want to defer to the wishes of the defendant in in these cases. I remember, you know, we've been asked at certain trials to uh, stand for the judge. I'll just leave the courtroom rather than standing for the judge. Uh, but you know, yeah, if somebody asked me to stop doing outreach at their trial, then you know, if I respected that person, I would I would definitely do that. I hope that you guys, uh, whoever sticks around for the trial aspect of this, will uh, continue to call in and, and give us updates. Will you do that? Yes, we sure will. You guys are so awesome. Thank you Good so much there. for coming on with us tonight here. And keep up the great work. We're going to keep our listeners informed. And uh, and don't forget to go to thelibertybeat.com for the latest on this trial as it develops. Thanks, guys, and good night. Good night. We'll see you, we'll see you tomorrow at freetalklive.com. Free Talk. Free Talk Live. This is the first time I've heard your program. I'm, t- I'm hearing this person talk about what a wonderful thing it would be if we had legal drugs. Yes, I don't know Andy. where you're getting your information from. I think you've lost your mind. I'm telling you. I'm, oh, you don't want to hear. You no, don't no, want to no, hear reality. reality. I want to hear everything you want to hear. You don't want to hear reality. Okay, Please, well then. Knock then me over with reality, like Sandy. 12 year old, you know? I'm telling you what about the war on drugs. <laughs> if you see people on drugs, you might change your mind. Man, look, no, my, my wife, my wife works at a drug treatment center, lady. 
Oh, good for her. There you go. Good for her. Sandy, okay. I've smoked copious amounts of marijuana. I, I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that a bit. That's probably what's wrong with your brain. I've been around plenty of people that have taken you drugs, Sandy. You got a fact Sandy. for me, Ann, uh, Sandy? One of them? Fact? I don't have statistics. Sandy, we're yeah. not asking people to smoke marijuana. We're just saying let's not make it illegal. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com the three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The latest episode of Peace News Now is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Kane in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, January 13th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.98 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,241 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $232. Antiwar.com reports the Obama administration has confirmed that Cuba is complying with the terms of the largely secret deal on reproachment and has released all 53 prisoners of conscience the U.S. wanted released. The 53 included members of several opposition groups. Jose Daniel Ferrer, the head of one such opposition group, thanked the U.S. for securing the releases, but said there were other political prisoners still being held. Senator Marco Rubio, an outspoken opponent of reproachment with Cuba, termed the releases a minimal change and said Cuba was getting everything it wanted from the U.S. in return. The deal included the U.S. and Cuba trading prisoners and will reportedly lead to an end to the over half a century of embargo on the Caribbean island nation, though officials say that the long-standing travel ban may only be partially lifted. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports New York Times reporter James Risen will not be called to testify in a CIA leak case that has become a flashpoint of contention over press freedom. The Times reported on its website that the Department of Justice said in filings it would not call Risen to testify in the government's federal court case against former CIA officer Jeffrey Sterling. Sterling's lawyer said on Monday they also would not call Risen to take the stand after earlier leaving open the possibility. The years-long legal struggle over whether Risen should be forced to testify came to represent the tension between balancing freedom of the press and U.S. national security. The decision by the two sides in the Sterling case not to call Risen as a witness at trial came one week after the journalist testified in the case at a preliminary hearing in Alexandria, Virginia, where he refused to answer all but a few basic questions about the 2006 book, State of War, that detailed a failed CIA effort to undermine Iran's nuclear weapons program. He would not disclose what information confidential sources provided for his book, where or when he met with unnamed sources, and who had not served as a source. It was Risen's first time appearing under oath on the witness stand in the case. Sterling was indicted for unauthorized disclosure of national defense information and other charges in 2010. Risen sought to quash an earlier subpoena requiring him to testify, but an appeals court ruled against him and the Supreme Court declined last year to take up the case. 
ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. UPI reports, CNN has received permission from the Federal Aviation Administration to test drones for news gathering and reporting. The news organization will be teaming up with the Georgia Tech Research Institute to collect information on how using drones with cameras attached will work, and the FAA will look at the information and create rules for how news organizations can use drones. CNN Senior Vice President David Vigilante said, Our aim is to get beyond hobby-grade equipment and to establish what options are available and workable to produce high-quality video journalism using various types of UAVs and camera setups. Our hope is that these efforts contribute to the development of a vibrant ecosystem where operations of various types and sizes can safely operate in the U.S. airspace. The FAA has previously announced certain restrictions on how film and video makers can use drones, including limiting the drone's weight to 55 pounds and dictating that the drones need to stay in the operator's line of sight. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. A report released this week by the Brookings Institution found that the U.S. currently has enough chairs and that there is no urgent need to produce any new ones for the time being. Researchers confirmed through overwhelming evidence that there is absolutely no shortage of chairs, citing in their findings the sheer number of armchairs, folding chairs, bar stools, Adirondack chairs, swivel chairs, lazy boys, and rocking chairs already in existence. Our research shows that even in a place where there seems not to be enough chairs, a quick investigation will find one or two chairs just over in the next room. Basically, as far as as chairs go, I'd like to reiterate that we have a very good number of them and could just use those. And in this week's local news, shit, the guy in front of you is ordering for an entire construction crew. In other news, a local police department reduces costs by using the same evidence for every investigation. Voters are clamoring to hear if a female political candidate is a mother first, and a whitewater rafting trip in which a friend drowned is still pretty fun. This is the Onion News Network. I see. All right. Hey everyone, welcome. This is Peace News. Oh wait, let's start broadcasting on YouTube. Please hold. Alright, that ding means we are now broadcasting on YouTube. Join us at peacenewsnow.com slash live. You can see live video of this show as well as join others in the chat room. I am signed in there. So, ask your questions there. You can also dial in. 443-424-8347 or Skype us Peace News Now. Tonight is Thursday, January 8th, 2015. I'm your host, Derek J. You can learn about me at my website, derekj.me, or tweet your questions at Derek J M E. So tonight we've got a good one. Uh focusing on media and peaceful resistors in indie media. John Vibes joins us from the Free Thought Project to start things off. Then we got Dave Ridley of the Ridley Report and Morgan Rockwell from Bitcoin Kinetics, uh, changing directions a bit, turning towards engineering for the peaceful future. Very exciting. 